How's it going, everybody? Mr. Holton here. How you doing? Welcome, welcome to this uh, Mass Effect Monday stream where we're going to talk, well, a little bit about Shepard. <laughs> Just a teensy tiny bit. And we're going to, well, check out a little thing that I made, a uh, very scuffed thing that I made, but I'm still kind of proud of it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're going to, you know, talk about some possible things here, a possible theory that I think makes a lot of sense for the next Mass Effect game. Uh, I also want to check out Kala Elizabeth's newest video, which is pretty long, but uh, I really want to check it out with you guys, so we're going to do that as well. Um, just a moment, here we go. See if you guys are here yet. I know I'm also starting a little bit earlier, an hour or so. It's just because the time zones are so... Well, it gets really late here in Sweden whenever I start streaming normally, so I feel like we got, you know, we got to try out at least this time slot, which is about like 5 p.m. in Sweden, uh, which is roughly the time a lot of people go off work. So I think uh, we're going to experiment with this a little bit. Maybe it works better for me. Maybe it works better for you guys. Let's uh, let's see what you think. Uh, Splash, how you doing? Let's go. Happy Mass Effect Monday. Happy Mass Effect Monday. Nothing is really new, though. Let's just, I want to point that out. There's nothing new from Bioware. There's nothing new from Michael Gamble. There's no new news or anything. It's just, you know, uh, <laughs> we got to keep this ball rolling. Come on, like, or else we're all going to go insane, right? Uh, Arlie, how you doing? Howdy. Uh, Marching Golek galaxy is ready yes uh the stargazer sort of st sort of it literally made it has youtube been updated i don't know maybe it has i have noticed that i'm getting very much spammed all the time by youtube uh i'm getting so many recommendations i don't even know what to watch on youtube anymore so i'm not really sure if it's a good update feels like uh, I'm seeing way too much shit on my homepage, unfortunately. I'm going to make the chat bigger here so you guys can see yourselves. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Boop. Oren, thank you so much for the two months, man. Appreciate it. Happy streaming. Same to you. Um, European 17. You're right. Yeah, the European uh, time slot whenever people start, stop working here. Uh, Norway here. Time is perfect. Nice, lawyer. Or layer, wire layer. <laughs> how you guys doing? How you guys, how you doing, random nerd? I'm doing pretty okay, actually. I'm um, I'm pretty hyped to talk about this little topic today. Uh, I'm also yes, I'm going to. In case anybody is like wondering here, I'm going to try out the new Suicide Squad game because I'm a massive, uh, you know, old DC fan. I'm an old Superman fan, Batman fan, Wonder Woman fan. Yes, I'm of course gonna try that game out and see what all the fuss is about. All I know is that they're having really big difficulties right now, so I'm not really expecting much, but you know, I got to I got to sacrifice some some money for the sake of my audience and I will probably make a video about that as well just to check it out, you know, because I'm really interested in how is that game even, you know, even going to hold up. Um one more story. Very true. Kathleen, how you doing? Uh, greetings from Germany. Hey, Janik. Welcome. Uh, yep, adverts everywhere. Yes, it's unfortunate. YouTube has become... <laughs> I don't know what to call it anymore. It's just insane how much you're getting, like, spammed. Not only with advertisements, but there's too many choices right now, you know? There's just too many, too many things getting thrown in your face on the creator uh, homepage, or, well, the, the homepage overall. It's just, wow, I, I don't even know what to watch anymore. So I just, you know, jump off YouTube because I don't know what to watch. Uh, Quake and Bush, Carlos, hi from Mexico. Welcome, Dragon. Love you, love you too. I uh, imagine this Commander Shepard returns, uh, outs the new big baddie, stops their evil attentions for the moment by truly sacrificing himself in the end. I don't even think we need to go that uh, hard, though, honestly. I think uh, we deserve, uh, Shepard deserves a happy ending. I'm on that boat, right? I don't consider it. I'm not, you know... It's not like I'm not going to be sold on the next game just because Shepard isn't in it. But I do think we deserve closure. I think Shepard deserves closure. I think the OG fans deserve closure. Now, I know there's OG fans that are happy with the endings, but there's a lot of people that weren't. Uh, so, um, yeah, I just want to see, in my opinion, I just want to see 
one more story. That is what I want. And I think a lot of people want that as well. One more story to get closure, then we can move on. What I'm saying here is that I am fine if the next game has Shepard in it as a protagonist and we play a Shepard, but they do it in like the Dragon Age way, right? Where we play a Shepard for one game, one more game, then we move on. And I think it's possible that this could happen. That's the thing, right? Because of what we've been fed with so far from Mike Gamble and the team, it's not really clear at all. Like even Michael has said, he's literally stated, nothing is what it seems. So, or well, something along those lines, like it's, it's not what it seems to be, right? When you're puzzling things together. So in my mind, I've been thinking like, I think a lot of you guys have been thinking the same way. Is he inserting very different parts of the game that are very spread out and that they really have no uh, real connection at the end of the day? Because that is what I've been thinking lately is like, he's dropping like hints and teases and... But those things aren't exactly what they seem. They're not all really connected in that way we think, right? That is what I've been thinking lately. Ah, shit, here we go again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> here we go again that's what we do you know as content creators we keep to a niche and if it works you just keep doing it it's really hard to break out of it i love talking about mass effect and today's stream is one of those times where i actually feel like yes i want to talk about this because i'm i'm actually finding the theory and the topic interesting it's not like i've made this up myself i've seen people talk about this before but, I, you know, as usual with the internet, I do not know where this idea originated. So I can't give you this, like, you know, the original poster of this idea. But I do think it's an interesting one. Um, Slim, how you doing? Uh, yo, Bronwyn, what's up? Hey, I agree with you there. Let Shep retire, mother, father, some bait. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Enough teasing, enough teasing. Let's jump over to my beautiful timeline. Whoops. Well, you weren't supposed to see that. Uh, let's uh, go to... Where did it go? <laughs> okay, just a little joke for you guys. I I, uh, I just... That, that was actually intentional. Uh, let's see, where is it? One more theory. There we go. Bam. Demian, how you doing? Uh, Love Shepard, my favorite character to play in gaming and wouldn't mind seeing them retire, but Ch Shepard's time has passed. Let them rest. They absolutely earned it. Anyway, not everybody feels this way, though, and we're going to check out the the answers from the community poll later, which um, I actually posted today. Oh, this got very large. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, where did it go? Jesus. OBS is a handful, I'm sorry. I really need somebody to like mod this for him, but it's super, uh, super, super difficult to do from a distance. Uh, okay, so we need the the chat. I'm going to pop over here for a moment, copy that, add that, so we can see you guys writing. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the timeline. Okay, so first of all, uh, the next game... Um, now, this is just a theory. There's, like, no basis for this whatsoever. I'm just making shit up. <laughs> What's your source? My sources. I made the fuck up. Made it the fuck up. Uh, okay, Reaper War starts here, right? I haven't written any, like, years, but, you know, who cares? Uh, Shepard is found in rubble and heals up. Now, I'm going off the idea that we would build from the destroy ending. Now, I, I need to make you guys understand that... This is in case Destroy was chosen as a canon option. Not saying that it is. I'm saying that if it was, this is the route I think they would have to take. Okay? Anna, how you doing? Welcome. Uh, source, trust me, chat? Yes. <laughs> it's just a theory. A game theory. Indeed. It's just made up shit. We're just having fun. Okay. Shepard is found in rubble. Heals up. Scramble is the next step. Scramble to recover uh, Reaper technology 
which I've talked about before, and all of you guys are probably absolutely certain that would happen after the Reapers fall and gets destroyed. There's a scramble to take their technology because the Reapers were like an overwhelming force, and it's just through essentially Deus Ex Machina in a way that we save the day. Otherwise, comparatively, the Reapers are much more powerful than any other race in the galaxy by like light years. It's insane. So, Everybody wants a piece of the Reapers. Everybody wants uh, to be able to like reverse engineer a bunch of stuff that the Reapers uh, like the, the technology they had to progress their own civilizations to become the top dog because that is exactly what happens every goddamn time, especially through human history. So, you know, we can apply that here as well, I think, because that is what we've seen throughout the galaxy in Mass Effect as well, right? Uh, it's always about like, you know, being the top dog, really. As much as there's a lot of democracy and stuff in the galaxy, we, I mean, look at Cerberus, look at humanity. Uh, <laughs> anyway, galactic instability. I have the council up there, right, just to represent it. Due to races distrusting each other. Now, why would anyone distrust each other after the Reaper War? Because that's just how reality works, right? Uh, even if uh, we have a conglomerate of races, of factions that work together, like a new council, for example, we're not going to get along all the time. There are individuals that are not going to get along. There are factions that are going to separate because that's just how it works. Because if, it, if there isn't, there's not going to be any conflict. And if there's no conflict, there's no basis for another game, right? We can all understand that, right? So this is how it would go, in my opinion. Reaper, uh, reverse engineer Reaper tech results in some races getting the upper hand. That is the inevitable end point, right? Whenever somebody starts harvesting the Reaper parts uh, and starts reverse engineering and get, you know, heavily like progressing their own civilization, say like humanity, right? <laughs> because most Reapers are probably located on Earth and surrounding Earth. So there's a lot of tech... Uh, that humanity can essentially just harvest and, uh, well, progress faster than anyone else because they have basically everything they need, I would say. Uh, $100 says uh, somehow Conrad Werner will be involved in ME5. I really hope he will. I love Conrad. I want him back just because he's, he's, he's just that guy. He's just that jokey character, that silly character that you just need for that comic relief. Uh, Dr. Evil. <laughs> I couldn't come up with anything else really there. Um, got, uh, guys, I got my dog back. I think I'm going to freeze to death before I get to my house. Though, damn slim. Take care. Be careful. Uh, see you later, hopefully. Salarian? Uh, yeah. They're also one example of a species that always, like, vies to, uh, become the top dog, I'd say. Uh, Krogans, Asari, yes, very true, guys. All of these uh, species have always, like, including humanity, have always, like, tried to grab the power, so to speak, in some way. Uh, or come out on top. Uh, also, people would be angry about different races' choices during the conflict and a lot of distrust over who might still be indoctrinated. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to not trust uh, uh, other species anymore. And I think as much as the galaxy was united, they were uh, united against a common enemy, a common enemy as long as they had a common enemy. <laughs> now they don't anymore. Now it's over, you know? And so the conflict and the mistrust starts building again because you don't have anything to unite for anymore. That usually just lasts for as long as the problem exists, right? Uh, okay, so Shepard and company, because Shepard has managed to, as we see, you know, with the destroy ending over there to the left, uh, Shepard manages to survive, of course. We see the chest rising, and this is, of course, the perfect destroy ending I'm building off of. So Shepard and company gets involved, starts myst uh, investigating mysterious events happening across the galaxy. And as we've seen with some of the teasing from uh, Michael and the team, we have this uh, the, this uh, crater, right, where we see uh, bodies of both Geth and Quarians. If you really zoom in close, it's uh, it, like it's essentially confirmed. Yes, those are bodies. Uh, so there are events happening and you would think, OK, what what how did this crater get created? How was this made? My idea is that somebody is doing 
very sinister stuff. So it's my idea that something is getting used to bombard settlements or planets or moons or what have you. Somebody is attacking uh, various settlements and stuff to essentially cause friction in some way, to cause further distrust, right? To make other races weaker, uh, perhaps do another power grab, because that is essentially, you know, when you really think about it, that's a very logical way to go, right? Uh, I'm betting 200 a euro. It's the humans this time around. Again, <laughs> always starting something for real, for real. True, true. Always humanity up here. Um, also, 10,000 bucks says the Azari steal so much Reaper Shen. Don't tell nobody. Yes, because they did. <laughs> Essentially. Well, um, or well, not Reaper stuff, but they did have the Prothean uh, beacon. The other Prothean beacon hidden. Uh, Cerberus is a three-headed dog, but he, the heads grow back when destroyed. Dr. Evil confirmed. <laughs> hey, Ray, how you doing? Um, using all the Reaper technology will lead to uncontrolled technology developments, especially if criminal structures or groups like Cerberus get them in their hands. Remember Spider-Man Homecoming? Yeah, like the, the, the thing is, like, how else would you go about dealing with the, the aftermath of the Reapers, right? There are so many Reaper bodies and technology lying around. Like, what are you going to do with all that? Is all that just scrapped? Do you really think that, you know, you have a galaxy of trillions of individuals? Do you really think that, <laughs> like, every race would just start scrapping Reaper material? No! Of course everybody would like to, you know have that as it's literally a gold mine you know you could become rich of that um exactly i sorry i have a track record they do have a track record i but i think that a lot of different factions like we've seen in mass Effect before starts you know doing this you know being competitive with it with each other they're trying to like claim all these parts i think you kind of need to deal with the aftermath otherwise it's weird you know what happens to all the parts it's just it's a big plot hole really uh silencer hi hi hey and Sven agents wait weren't here before uh okay i didn't uh freeze to death also there are some great graphics here you think so nice well good of you not to freeze to death that's uh positive <laughs> what's good guys how you doing Reldy? how do you think uh, indoctrinated people would be handled after the war that is a very good question what would happen to everybody who was indoctrinated? Because as far as we know, right, uh, the indoctrination signal, it literally changes you at, at a molecular level. So you, you wouldn't be able to really reverse indoctrination at the end of the day. As far as I know, I don't know the exact statements, but you can't reverse it. So, I mean... I would say most of people that were indoctrinated are probably really fucked. Uh, which is unfortunate, but, <laughs> but you know, I think that's, uh, that would be what it is. Uh, I don't know how they would deal with it. Really. You would almost have to like, uh, uh, keep heavy surveillance around people with an indoctrination, but how many people weren't indoctrinated? It's like probably in the billions, honestly, when it comes to the Reaper war, at least millions of people, which is just insane. What would you do with people like that? Uh, it's a very, 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 very uh, scary question, really. Uh, okay, so, yes, events such as the crater poster causes further distrust. Racists and factions start blaming each other. Of course, as they would, because, you know, oh, you know, if it's, let's say that this is a Corian slash Geth uh, settlement and they're just living in peace. And somewhere along the line, uh, you know, somebody comes along and just blows that entire settlement to smithereens uh, of course you're going to start asking questions and uh, maybe neighboring stars and systems with uh you know various species in them are starting to think hey who you know who did this and so maybe you're starting to look at like neighboring systems maybe you know what if it's a batarian system that's close by and people start thinking oh jesus there was there was a batarian fleet just flying by maybe they're the batarians are extinct we don't know but uh <laughs> you get what i'm saying here right distrust would naturally start building 
And that is where Shepard and the old team comes in again because they start investigating. And that is who we're seeing up there. You know, the, the whole teasing, oh, we're not going to show who this is. You know, so uh, yeah, I think this could still be Shepard in this uh, in this timeline if this theory would hold. So Shepard, the team starts investigating, trying to find out who's behind all this because a, a galactic civil war is brewing. Everybody is mistrusting each other. Everybody's you know scared shitless, and we have like entire systems getting blown. Maybe not entire systems, but almost planets, settlements getting wiped out. Nobody knows who it is. Uh, and, uh, yeah, anyway, so, uh, the story proceeds, I don't know, like, how far it goes, I'm just, you know, throwing ideas here, but essentially, Shepard and Culprit, uh, and company finds the Culprit, which is, uh, of course, Dr. Evil, makes, uh, makes his first entrance into Mass Effect, discovers instabilities mostly engineered to weaken other races even more, right, because somebody is trying to grab power, become the top dog, it's just... It's, I guess you could say it's almost like a storytelling 101. It's, it's a very simple concept. It's not something mind-blowing. Uh, it's not anything to do with dark energy or something like that. It's something you can grasp onto, and it's, it's a simple storyline. Uh, and then before a galaxy erupts into civil war, Shepard and company, and Shepard, of course, turns into one punch man, stops bad guy by punching the bad guys in the face, uh, as you do. Uh, that is exactly how it it would go it, it, it will go down uh and uh yeah essentially that is the <laughs> idea right <laughs> then after this this concept right after stopping the bad guy shepherd and the friends become uh, messengers of peace lays the foundation for a peaceful yet powerful united milky way galaxy and why i'm saying this is i ha always had this idea that shepherd is um important not solely for you know stopping the reapers shepherd shepherd's job isn't done until shepherd helps rebuild the galaxy as well and that's why i think it could be a good idea to have this one more story situation because the next game would be the only next installment where we see shepherd then we move on because centuries later we get this right andromeda storyland uh, takes place and then we have this one right because i've been thinking okay what could this be obviously you know you i've been thinking about this a lot because on this little poster uh or this footage let's see if i can drag it all the way here ah uh, yeah we can do this milky way and andromeda bridge storyline takes place in the sequel to deal with andromeda threat this could actually be maybe like a shot from like somewhere at the end of the game or something you know just to tease you a little bit they're not showing the ending but teasing us that this could possibly be something that we see later on in the game and not at the beginning or anything that this is important for another reason because this thing actually has text on the left side uh, that says uh essentially it's a combination where the captain of the ship, if this is a ship, or if it's the ship that's filming the relay ship, or whatever it is, it essentially says that, that the captain is uh, something something. It's like a mix of a quarian and a human's name. So it's like, hmm, okay, are we seeing... And then I think we see the year as well, as far as I understand it. And it seems to be in the future. So maybe this thing is what is actually connecting the Milky Way to Andromeda. And we might continue the uh, Andromeda storyline later, but this game will sort of serve as a redemption arc uh, for Mass Effect in a way. It also serves as what, the game where we actually get closure with Shepard and our squad mates, right? And so that entire thing where uh, Liara picks up something, you know, maybe it's like the, the N7 uh, part of the helmet, it might actually be further on in the game later on where Liara reminisces about her past with Shepard and friends, right? It would be that one last shot where we actually get to see Shepard and get closure with our friends and our squad mates, just so we can sort of, sort of kind of cut ties or, well, maybe not cut ties, but remember Mass Effect and Shepard's story fondly. And so we can move on to the next game. Uh, 
Justice League, yes. <laughs> Uh, the effects of indoctrinations could should be gone by destroying them. The Reapers also lost grip of their minions, so which they controlled by the same as I understand. The problem with that, uh, Tamui, is that as far as uh, as I know, I think it even says that on the wiki. Indo is indoctrination reversible? Yes, effects. Uh, the mental damage from indoctrination is severe and permanent because it actually literally changes your brain. Uh, it's not something you can just uh, space magic away, unfortunately. So the Destroy Blast does not change the fact that you have already been brainwashed, uh, which is unfortunate. But yeah, that's essentially what I understand it from. It's not like it's just reversed. You know, oh, it's a miracle. Everybody's cured of indoctrination. No, it literally, it's damaging your brain. So your brain is damaged. You're screwed if you're indoctrinated, unfortunately. Um, did you make this whole board? Yes, I did. It took me uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, oh, snap. They're going to do a Red Dead Redemption. Shepard properly passes Ryder to Torch. Yes, and the thing is, Shepard doesn't need to die. Shepard does not need to die in this game. We don't need a Shepard dying. So if this storyline would take place, right, we could still like have Tally, we could have Liara, we could have Garrus, we could have all our romances and we get an epilogue with all our, like with whoever we romanced and our friends, uh, depending on what happened, right? And then we just kind of leave and then we get you know a uh a flash forward or a forward uh you know we, we go forward into the future at like the epilogue of the game and then we see that there is a connection made there is like a highway created between andromeda and the milky way and we can start on the new chapter with mass effect where andromeda writer and the team or maybe not writer and the team but essentially the people of andromeda need help and they are trying to make contact with the Milky Way because they need assistance, because they don't have, I don't know, ships, gear, technology. They, they, they won't survive against the invading Ket Empire, which we know are very well, full, well working. You know, they're, they're, they're there in the background. That is essentially what I think that, that the sequel to Andromeda was going to be about, like the full invasion of the Ket Empire. Uh, and so uh, maybe we could see a continuation of that. But we sort of need this redemption arc for Mass Effect, right? For Bioware. We sort of need this. And I think bringing Shepard back is a good idea for one game. Just in order to sort of bridge the two games, like the two franchises. And then you move on. Uh, if you can deliver it well, that is, is what I'm saying. Uh... Is this Mr. Holton swinging for the fences theory stream? Yes, <laughs> but I think this is the one that makes sense. This is the only one that I can think of personally that makes sense that where that where it doesn't require you to think uh, up a bunch of bullshit excuses and ways to make uh, Ryder and Shepard be in the same game. It could still be about Shepard and the squad, but it's. It's about, you know, 90% of the 95% of the game is about Shepard and the team. And then at the last like few minutes of the game, like maybe last half an hour, you see an epilogue, which brings us together with Andromeda. And so we can continue, right? Um, yes. End the story with Shepard properly, I think. Uh, they could take a page out of Dragon Age Inquisition's book and have the map span two major zones for the game to take place for Elden and Orlay, but for Master 2 5, it would be the Milky Way Andromeda. You mean, oh, you mean like it takes place in both galaxies? That would be difficult. I mean, that could be possible if they like, but the, pro the question is why? Uh, because the galaxies are so huge. <laughs> There's so many planets, so many systems, like... Uh, the Milky Way is barely explored, really, in Mass Effect, so there's so much to discover still. The, the, that's the biggest question, right? Why would you, like, because all we can assume is that the galaxy, um, like, the, the galaxies are just, you know, 
I can understand what it when it's like literally a map where you visit and it's two different maps. Uh, but when it comes to like the galaxy map, I don't. Yeah, that's. I'm, I don't see how you can motivate that. Um, I honestly can't do anything other than destroy because that's what Shepard has been doing for the whole trilogy. Yeah, a lot of people motivate uh, the entire like future of Mass Effect with the idea that Shepard always intended to destroy the Reapers, and that was the intention all along. Uh, th but Bioware still gave us the choices, right, where we could uh, pick, control, destroy, uh, synthesis. Uh, so, you know, I, th I still think that a part of me wants to see the what they could do with all the endings, but the logical person in me says that destroy is the most obvious one because it's more simple to explain. Uh, hung with the five gifted absolute specter. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, let's add you on my chest because uh, we, we gotta we gotta do that. Uh, where are you at? Hung. We are coming in here. Gifting some memberships. Thank you so much, man. Again, uh, where did it go? Gifters? There we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's too... Oh, oh, no. There we go. Hope it's visible enough. Thank you again for the five additional. Again, thank you, Hung. Appreciate it. You absolute specter. You crazy, crazy man. Uh, <laughs> the goat. Um... And some squad member says idea, Mr. Alton, why? <laughs> no, it just depends on what it is, right? Because combining the, the what I'm really thinking about here, right, is how would you motivate uh, having two galaxy maps? Because the galaxies themselves are just big spirals of planets and suns. And so... I could see it being like, oh, okay, so you visited some very memorable planets, maybe in Andromeda, but I doubt very many people think very fondly of any of the planets as you may be doing in Mass Effect and Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3, because in the Mass Effect trilogy, there were more emotional uh, connections with each of these locations and planets. So I can understand it, let's say, if Andromeda had been received well and a lot of the emotional moments in Andromeda and such had really strong connections to uh, maps and environments. But I can't really think of, you know, that's one of the reasons why I like, like, um, Vermeer, for example, or Pharos. Uh, like, there's beats in the story where you're like, damn, you know, I, I remember those places well because of things that happen in the story. Um, what's it called again? Now, <laughs> now that I, that we're talking about it, I can't remember it. Um, Ilos, for example, super memorable planet, essentially just a big swamp jungle planet, uh, has a big, big connection to the feeling of the area, so to speak. Um... We'll each be checking out Hell Divers 2. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I haven't looked into what it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll check it out later. Uh, Shepard wanted to destroy the Reapers. Uh, any other ending spits in the face of all the people who died fighting the Reapers? Um, I wouldn't say that it spits the face, but it's... Yeah, I can see your point. As I mentioned before, like it's that was the, that was the idea from the get go. But there were other solutions, thankfully. Uh, I just wish <laughs> that they weren't so clear cut. I just wish they, you know, were a little bit more convoluted, more more interesting endings. But then again, you know, whatever. It's been ten years or something. Ten, eleven, yeah, twelve. Jesus, uh, grilled or fried chicken both depending on what i'm eating it with fried chicken is just good to eat by itself grilled is good when you're eating it with stuff like potato salads and stuff um emotional moments in andromeda are destroyed by characters faces looking like potato i wonder if that is the prime problem people had with andromeda is 
Was the animations really the problem? To me, it was a lot of the script, honestly. Uh, Apple Pie Synthesis is literally just siding with Sarah and Control is siding with Elusive Man. Destroys the only logical choice if you want to have a self-made ending. Hmm. 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 Uh, Silencer Legend with the eight months. Appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Thank you so much. Um, wait, wait, wait. Cat Invasion? I definitely missed something. Yeah, so what I was talking about, right? In case you didn't play Andromeda, or if you did, I'm just going to remind you here. So at the end of Andromeda, we see a little scene where one of the uh, main cat bad guys sort of spins around and walks away through a control room. And uh, I don't really remember what the detail was, but it's something about the Ket Empire uh, coming. Because I think that uh, that general or whatever is retreating to get reinforcements and contact the remaining Ket Empire. And that was the thing with the main bad guy in Andromeda is that he was heavily, uh, you know... Um, sort of separating himself from the main mission of what the Ket wanted to do. So what he wanted was absolute power, I guess, you know. It was his own search of becoming a god, essentially. Uh, a little, you know, trite, but that was essentially his motivation. And that was not the, the mission that he was sent on by the Ket Empire. So he's not the emperor, he's not the leader of the Ket or anything. The Ket Empire is much, much, much bigger than just him and his faction, right? And so that was essentially the idea. You can see that just from like playing the game that, oh, okay, so they're invading now in the next game, but we never got the next game. So that could be a plot point later on, you know, that they bring back again. But first they have to do a good game. <laughs> so people are open to the idea because that is the problem. Uh, script is the biggest problem, but I couldn't take the characters seriously because they didn't look even real compared with Mass Effect 1. True. True. Yes. The animations, they definitely have to fix. I, I very much think that the g game is going to look very different to what Andromeda looked like, first of all, because the game is being made in Unreal Engine 5. We've already seen footage, uh, a teeny tiny bit of footage from the game, you know, with the, the teaser, uh, little teaser we got on N7 Day with the person walking away, which is probably Sh Shepard. If it's not Shepard, it's a new character. But anyway, that little teaser was actually in-game, uh, or it was in-engine, so to speak, at least. So it was made with Unreal Engine 5. But, and so you can clearly see that, yes, that looks very different. Um, <clears throat> isn't that the whole Ket thing tied to what was supposed to be DLC for Andromeda? We don't really know what the DLC was supposed to be. I don't think there is a clear answer to what it was. Uh, the idea that was uh, presented for a while was that it was supposed to be about the Quarian Arc. But that was supposedly not real, you know, the entire uh, DLC. I think, uh, yes, Cal, I went over that in the video, which is pretty good. You check that out if you haven't already. Um, if the cat invaded Andromeda, where did they come from? That is a big question, because uh, that is some questions they ask throughout Andromeda. It's like, what the hell are the cat really? What do they really want? Well, reproduction, as far as we understand it, right? But, uh, like, did they, did they come from Andromeda? Probably not, uh, as far as I could tell. Uh, there are a lot of questions, really cool questions they asked uh, that never got answered. Um, hot take, I'd be fine with another game in Andromeda. If the script is good, the Ket are, in my opinion, a good idea. They're unique. I'd just like them to kind of change the design around them and make them a little bit more interesting. You know, maybe those Ket that we encountered in Andromeda were like an offshoot. I would like to see like the true form of what the Ket look like and what they are really. Uh, wasn't super interested in their choice of design for the Ket. They're very uninspired. They're very unscary. Not scary, actually. <laughs> so yeah, I hope they find some other way to twist that around. Um, Ket or Reaper poop. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you think synthesis is connected to Saren in any way? Uh, well, if you look at the, if you look at the like the meaning of synthesis, I would say yes. I think they were trying to sort of uh, go back to, like it's sort of a call back to Saren in a way, 
uh, because the game started with Saren as the bad guy and he was essentially a synthesis creature, sort of. Like, he was supposed to be this perfect uh, amalgamation of organic and synthetic. He wasn't, though. He was more like a, you know, he was more like a Frank Frankenstein's monster, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the combat is surprisingly good in Andromeda. I'm going to be fair. The combat is pretty good. I talked about that in my last video about it, which was, which was released last year. Um, and yeah, that's the one thing I think uh, they just need to improve upon. Just, uh, you know, um, or bring back sort of and then improve again. It was definitely the best part of Andromeda. Uh, dollar store proteins. Yes. <laughs> okay, we got to go back to this question. Now, I've shown you my timeline. Hope you guys liked it. I spent 20 minutes on it. Okay, here we go. This one I asked today. I'm actually surprised at the amount of, uh, of answers I've gotten here. Uh, 4,000 votes and counting, which is pretty cool. So what I asked, and uh, I just want to make sure that you guys know that YouTube's polling system is still not very good because it has a very limited amount of characters you can enter. I would really have loved to enter more uh, letters into each poll. And every time I've done a poll, I always felt the same way that there's just not enough text where I can enter so people understand what I'm asking. Maybe, you know, maybe I should ask better questions. The problem is I'm Swedish, so I have a language barrier. I don't really know what the best way to formulate questions like this is. But what I said here is, do you think Commander Shepard's importance is over inflated? <laughs> You know, is it, are we making it a bigger deal than it actually is? Because as we know, most people who play games don't actually <laughs> sit around too much on the internet because most people just, you know, work their everyday life. Then again, I do think there's a very big online presence of gamers all the time. I don't think that it's like, oh, 95% of gamers don't even go to the internet. I think it's probably not that big. I think maybe like 70% of regular people don't look up stuff like this, but I would say that maybe like a 30% people do. I think it's a big part uh, that still look this stuff up, that still give their opinions on the internet. I don't think it's that, you know, that, that, that small of an issue really. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I got uh, 22. All right. Uh, as in, does most fans not really care if they return or not in the next Mass with Games? Shepard is not that important. I probably should have struct that, structured that differently. 22% Shepard is that important. 78%. I didn't mean that Shepard isn't important. What I meant is, is Shepard important in returning for the next game is really what I wanted to say. But there was a character limit, so I couldn't do that. Uh... Now, 127 comments, which is uh, also pretty cool. Uh, da uh, David Sempio says uh, his dancing skills are enough to <laughs> a reason to bring him back. <laughs> I just, that got a chuckle out of me. And uh, yeah, if somebody's going to do the shepherd shuffle, it better be shepherd. It can't be, can't be anyone else. Uh, Jarek says, I think we need the last game with shepherd. That is essentially what I'm saying here as well. I think uh, one final game with Shepard where we get a, you know, where we're left with a good aftertaste of Mass Effect is really what I feel like we need. There is no Mass Effect without Shep. Simple as that, says Stormy. Uh, Atom says, I think that Shepard is important because of the connection to the original trilogy and the feeling of continuation of the adventure. Big part of Mass Effect's success was because of how well the characters were written and how it made you care about them. We all want the old crew back. Please, nothing to do with Andromeda. I know they will include Andromeda somehow because the same people worked on it. You can see what he's saying there. There's a lot of, you know, people with that has a bitter taste of Andromeda still left in their mouths, and I can understand that. Uh, this is 24 upvotes. Pretty popular. Uh, Olivia says, Commander Shepard, report to the ship as soon as po possible. We need you as the main character. It'll, I'll be, <laughs> it'll be banging good, okay? Yes. 
Commander Shepard is Mass Effect, remember the poll from Bioware? Because yes, there was a official poll from Bioware, but I don't remember exactly what it said, but there was a lot of people that had voted for like Destroy Ending and you know, a lot of official stuff where people had, um, you know, uh, where, where we could see results where people were very fond of Shepard, so to speak. Uh, just one more game with Shepard would be cool, says Blued. Uh, Achaean says, I think a nod to Shepard would be nice. Maybe just a mention or appearance if they survive, but not more than that. Kind of like how they had Hawk in Dragon Age Inquisition. I would love that level of interaction with Shepard. But as far as being able to play them again, no thanks. I want to find new characters to romance without breaking my head cannon. Lol. Good point. <laughs> if we want to romance new characters... It's probably best to do it with a new character, really, like a new protagonist. Hmm. I can see what she, what she's saying there. That's a that's a very good point. Um <clears throat> saying that Shepard's importance is overblown as wild literally saved the galaxy. Yeah, I know, but like that's not really what I mean. What I mean is like, do people really care that much if Shepard comes back in the next game? Or is it like the general audience I'm talking about? Like the general gamer, you, you, know, you know, gets home from school, plays games, gets home from work, plays games. Just like, you know, I generally did back in the day. Uh, so that, that's what I meant. Uh, your English is perfect. Thank you, Ori. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Andromeda was ambitious, but everyone was still hung over and invested in the trilogy. Yes, and a lot of people still, you know, didn't feel like they had closure was a big thing. Uh, <clears throat> Cora's gene must be passed on. Those cakes cannot be long. That's some good cake. That's one. That is another thing I got to say about Andromeda. Damn, like they really made those cake. Like whoever made <laughs> the booty for the characters you the boss man because <laughs> that was really well made uh for every character i think yes cora had a yes she had some a good package but i think most characters did actually quintus how you doing welcome um <laughs> uh the, i'd ra rather have a new protagonist see what other stories are made point taken lucarius um if someone asked me to explain Andromeda plot, my answer would be Cora's butt, because I can't remember how the other plot. Ah, <laughs> uh, having two galaxies is wild, way too much. Booty boss, mighty nickname. <laughs> Who's got better cake, Miranda or Cora? I'd probably give... Um... Damn, that's a tie, actually. I think they're good, both of them. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, responses here. I've actually checked out most of them, I think. Now, I don't want to like all of them because uh, that is the tendency to put the liked one, you know, at the top. Uh, so I really wanted to see impartially sort of what people actually think when they read through the comments themselves. So if you're wondering, hey, why isn't he liking my comment? It's just because I want to see what everybody else are thinking. And I don't want to like too many comments because then it gets topped. It gets put to the top. Uh, and so I think it's better if I just, you know, if I like one that's funny, that's fine. But uh, that's generally why I don't always do that. Uh, Nobs says, I just need some closure from that horrible ME3 ending. Uh, let's see what they say here. The refusal ending? Don't worry, they won't use that. No, I don't think that's what he meant. 20 updates, that's a lot. Uh Let's see here. I think Shepard is necessary for the story if this is only a few years after the events of 3 and your choices matter in 5. Outside of that, they could just do what Inquisition did with the keep. They could. They could. True. I think this will be soon after the, event, the events within at least 100 years. Shepard coming bad, back or being some form of plot point in 5 would be cool. With the whole clone thing, it's not far-fetched. Hail the free voice. I want, That's probably not Jennifer Hale, Hale but imagine if it was... <laughs> I don't want the clone back. That's just, I got to say that. I, I don't like the idea of having Shepard's clone or a new clone or something. Uh, I just want the real thing. Uh, that would be so disappointing. 
However, I still believe each announcement hints at the different endings somehow tying into things, although I need more evidence to prove my theory. Uh, I think so too. I agree with this last point that uh, like it's starting to feel like they're building towards, like if you look at the just, you, you try to puzzle it together like it is, which Michael said that it wasn't, you know, everything is not what it seems, but even if it, like if it was, um, then yes, I would make the assumption like I did from the beginning that they're trying to build all three endings into one game. Um, never played Mass Effect? Ash lad, what the hell, man? What the hell, man? You go do that right now. You don't have to, but I'm just saying, you're missing out. Uh, Shepard should be the next game, but he, she should be older and take on the role that Anderson has had as the mentor to the new protagonist. Cowie, I actually like that idea. I've had talked about that a lot. I would have loved to see Shepard as a sort of Anderson type character. That would be lovely. Uh, question is, you know, is everybody going to like that? I think Kala doesn't like that, for example, uh, because she wants to play a Shepard. And I, of course, do as well. But the next best thing is probably a mentor, uh, a mentor Shepard. That would be cool. But then again, you know, that risks running the ground of being like Hawk in Inquisition, where you really want to play as Hawk again, but you can't. Um, Jesus, I didn't see this one. Hike, let's be honest. Well, wait for Shep. Also, once, thank you for all you do. Best Emmy content creator on YouTube so far. Thank you. I pre appreciate that so much. <laughs> I haven't really talked that much about Mass Effect lately, though. But honestly, it's it's hard to do when there's not much content to talk about. Uh, Slim with the five bucks. Thank you. Assuming you don't get the next Emmy title until the rest of us. Is that something you'd be interested uh, experiencing on stream or by yourself? Uh, if I'm going to play the game when it launches live on stream, if I'm alive still by then, and if I, uh, if I'm still a content creator by then, yes, I will absolutely play this live on stream and we'll probably do it all together. Unless I'm getting a sent a free copy like before everybody, uh, but I'm still probably going to do it, even if I manage to play through the game, like with a review copy or something like weeks before. I'm probably still going to live stream it uh, live at the same time it comes out for everybody. But uh, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny that you're streaming as I'm updating my mod list for Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Nice. Well, I get, you know, it's Mass Effect Monday. You probably just thought, hey, wait, it's Monday. What? Why do I want to play Mass Effect with mods all of a sudden? It's, it's Mass Effect Monday. <laughs> uh, Shepard is a mentor in, in a mentor role in the next game would be a double-edged sword. Yes, it would be. Very true. Uh, what's going on with the Mass Effect TV show? I haven't heard anything uh, as of late. I've looked up information, but I can't find anything. So it seems like uh, they're waiting or maybe it's happening, but we haven't just heard anything about it. You know, who knows? Uh, hopefully something happens. But yeah, I don't know. E, the money move for Bioware EA is to have Shep as the protagonist. They gambled with a new protagonist in Andromeda and it didn't work. Many would have overlooked tech issues if Shep was still there. Rodney Edens. That's a good point. That's a thing that I keep seeing a lot of. I'm just going to, you know, just to... Um, eh, Just to have something else to look at for now. I'm just going to pop him over here. So that's something I keep seeing a lot is that it would be the best idea in terms of selling copies of the game is bringing Shepard back. Because Ryder was unfortunately not as resonating with people as they probably had hoped that a Ryder would be. And you have a point. The question is, that's why I asked this question, why I did this poll, and why I like to discuss about Shepard a lot, and why I think a lot of people do, is because do people generally, do the general gamer really care that much if Shepard comes back or not? Is it really that important? And... 
because that is going to be very important for the future of Bioware, I'd say. You have a point about that, because if Shepard actually does guarantee more copies, a lot more copies of the game, then there it would be stupid not to go that route, right? Because it would just be a, you know, a home, home run, basically. You still need a good game. The worst case scenario here would be if Shepard is in the game, but the game is bad. <laughs> that would suck, right? So again, we're on a like double-edged sword here. If we do bring Shepard back, there are still the chances that the game is not going to be good. I'm not saying that it isn't. Like anybody from Bioware, like the team watching this, I'm, I have I have belief in you guys. I have hopes, high hopes here, right? But in the worst case scenario, the next Mass Effect game bombs and it stars Shepard, that would be a nightmare that would be an absolute nightmare not only for Bioware but for all the fans because then we'd remember Shepard being the protagonist for a game that everybody just hates right so you see that's the problem right um <laughs> then again you know I think they know that they need a clear vision. I think they know that they need a good story. I think they know that they need all of these ingredients that Mass Effect is known for to make it successful again. And uh, writing and story and choices and all that stuff, that's super important. The dialogue is super important. And I think that's partly also why they brought Mary DeMarle on board because she, is, she knows what the fuck she's doing, so. You know, I think they're really pulling out all the stops for this one because it has to be a success. Uh, and so, yeah, man. Uh, the huge question is, is Joker alive or did Edie crush his pelvis? <laughs> I think, I think he's alive. He's probably alive. It's probably, it's fine. You know, I don't think Edie would do that. She's far too careful. For sure the research she she uh she does just to prepare herself for joker is uh is respectable right she uh she cares a lot about him she wouldn't crush his pelvis uh, make shepherd a companion for a couple of quests again i don't know is that a good idea hmm uh if dreadwolf bombs mass effect 5 will be in the shit um darth denise here's the thing right not necessarily, because we all know by now how the development for Dreadwolf has been, and it's been chaotic, so to speak, to say the least, according to different believable and respectable sources. It's been a shit show. It could still turn out to be a really good game, but in case Dreadwolf bombs, I don't necessarily think that it's like, for the next Mass Effect, I think that if anything it becomes much more important that mass effect delivers if dreadwolf bombs because i do think that the next mass effect i think mass effect is too important a franchise um for ea even to just give up on it is their star wars let's be honest it's their star wars it has such potential and i think they know that and so Mass Effect is really the last straw here. Now, I'm not saying that I don't love Dragon Age, but Mass Effect is, you know, from a technical point of view, logical point of view is the more important franchise right now, right? And so if Dragon Age bombs, Mass Effect, I do think, is really the last straw. But I don't think it's necessarily the last straw with the Dreadwolf. Um, as long as Bioware's under EA, there's always a risk. There is, but I think, you know, looking at what's been happening across the, this, uh, the gaming landscape, I, I think that every studio that's owned by a publisher is at risk right now. I mean, look at what Microsoft just did, right? Look at what they did right now. 
there's so many people that have lost their jobs and from ea's uh like their uh directive it's not even that much i know there are some people that have been let go uh especially from bioware but like there's there's ton there's thousands and thousands of people that have been let go from various studios ever since like just a few months ago it just started avalanching right and it's just been worse and worse and worse and so i wouldn't be that worried about ea anymore to be honest uh i'm just in general really worried about the gaming landscape as it is because people are getting fired left and right so yeah i'm not that you know oh ea anymore it's just yeah i know i know i was there okay <laughs> but shit that's been happening recently you know i i, I just think that ea has been like Oof. you know <laughs> they've been overshadowed by every other publisher right now Kala, welcome. How you doing? We're gonna watch your video in a moment, in case that's okay. You gotta, you gotta tell me first. Uh, we need twenty studios which belong to Sven Vink, and they should all do AAA games in the world. I think that would be too much for Sven, honestly. I mean, there's only so much you can do, and keep delivering stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, I wouldn't want to put that on Sven, but I do think yes he could probably be the top dog if you ever had like a big studio and and sven would be the top dog i would be very positive because i trust him more than any other like executive out there i would say of course nice okay just in a moment uh you was there mr holton i was there i was there remember the good old times when ea was messing up every franchise known to man no but but really, like, yes, I know their history. <laughs> but I don't, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not that worried about EA anymore. I think they understand how important uh, Dragon Age and Mass Effect are. Uh, but I for sure think that Mass Effect is really the last one, you know, if Dreadwolf bombs. You know, what franchise is possibly closest, which they can make a lot of money on? I was there 3,000 years ago. At least we'll have uh, GTA 6 to hold us uh, over until then. Yes. Oh my god, I'm looking forward to GTA. I haven't played uh, 5 in so many years, but I'm really looking forward to the next one. Uh, Sven's word is a uh, golden for gamers and is a beacon of hope for the industry. I think, uh, yes, I think his word is very important for everyone because they had one of the most successful games ever made released just a few year, uh, months ago. And um, a lot of people respect him and his words really do matter. He, he, right now he's the golden goose. His, his words are golden. And uh, it's very important to look at what he says. And I think a lot of industry people are and leaders in the industry are. And I think it's positive. It's very positive whenever he says something that he thinks need to, needs to change with the industry. Uh, ME4 will have tally sweat. Yes, please. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh grown uh okay let's check out kala's video it's a long one so you guys gotta prepare it's a massive video 46 minutes i'm just gonna mostly let this play i'm gonna pause every now and then but i don't want to uh <laughs> turn this into like a you know two hour reaction video uh so um yeah let's see where is it there it is Oops. No, no, no. What's happening? No, no. You're not supposed to be there. What? Why is this rolling in the background? Oh, there we go. There we go. God, I hate OBS. There. And then I got to make myself smaller because I'm way too big. 
Zip. I, uh, I'd uh, wear tally sweat as cologne. Bread, come on, man. <laughs> Mike Gamble. Better not gamble with the fans' copium. <laughs> True. <clears throat> okay. Let's go. Let's go. Kala's video. Let's go. Why I don't want to go back to Andromeda. Let's hear what Cal has to say. Before I start this video, I want to say first that I am an Andromeda fan. I think it was a good game despite its issues and could probably be improved upon had it had gotten a true sequel. But with that said, I still hope the next game doesn't take us back to the timeline of Andromeda. If you've been following all the hints and clues we've been shown for Mass Effect 5, mm -hmm. then you know Andromeda is being included in some capacity. Mm -hmm. We've seen direct timeline mentions of 2819, we've seen both galaxies, Angara, soundtracks from Andromeda, signs from Andromeda, and many other clues. It's happening. That Angara in the poster is such a dead giveaway that there's something going on here. The question is, you know, is that just a sort of like a tease that, yes, maybe at the end of the game, we're going to see a connection between uh, between the two galaxies. But yeah, that was a, that's a big one. And from what we've seen, I think there are three possible timelines that the next game ooh, will take place. Ooh, right. Uh, this is Kala's timeline, right? Mass Effect 3, 2186. This is much better than mine. <laughs> 1 to 30 years after Mass Effect 3, uh, 2500, around a year 2820, but in the Andromeda Galaxy, around year 2820, but in the Milky Way Galaxy. Both galaxies bear wormholes, time travel, time dilation, dark energy. No! <laughs> Don't you dare! Listen. A few years after Mass Effect 3, a few years after the events of Andromeda, or they will find a way to combine the two timelines. I'm going to go over why I think returning to the Milky Way galaxy should be the next game's focus, dissect any clues and hints that connect to Andromeda, and explain why I don't want to return to the Andromeda galaxy. So, first off, why do I think we should go back to the Milky Way galaxy instead of the Andromeda galaxy? Yeah, Kala, what are you saying? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's pretty obvious. There's a ton of questions left after the ending of Mass Effect 3. Mm -hmm. What actually happened with the endings? Was the Star Child lying? How do the endings actually work? Mm -hmm. What happened to our companions? Mm -hmm. And of course, what happened to Shepard? Mm -hmm. And yes, some of these answers are defined by your ending choices, but there is a lot within the world that exists that doesn't revolve around Shepard. Mm -hmm. And I want to see what the galaxy looks like after the Reaper War. Me too. Aside from the actual endings, there's a ton of lore that was set up that was never explored. Mm -hmm. What about all the various relays that haven't been traveled through? What about the rest of the Milky Way galaxy that hasn't even been explored yet? What about the fate? Yeah, like the Milky Way is so absurdly huge. It's an entire galaxy. Like... If I just threw a, an idea here, I would say that maybe 1% of the Milky Way galaxy, 1% of the Milky Way galaxy in Mass Effect has been explored. Maybe there's an official number that says that, oh, actually it's like 10%. But really at the top of my head, there's billions of stars. Isn't there like even trillions of stars? Well, billions at least. That's a lot of zeros of stars suns that's not even planets and then we gotta count the planets it's like ins it's an insane number really there's really no need to, <laughs> to place it in another galaxy when you really think about it it's so huge it's endless yes it's almost infinite it's too much it's too much i think the codex says it's less than one percent see alex I'm just going to assume that you're right. <laughs> yeah, man. Of the Leviathan, or the Ralloy, the virtual aliens, the Kirik, all these races virtual that have aliens. been given comprehensive lore connections to the greater Milky Way galaxy that have all been left unanswered. I got to mention this for anybody who's, uh, who hasn't, uh, doesn't understand the virtual aliens. 
So there was this one ship, right? It's in canon. This is lore. I think it's actually mentioned in Mass Effect 3, if I remember correctly. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that. In canon, it's mentioned that there's this ship that is unknown, that does not belong to the Citadel race. It, it just arrives, right? And it's like deserted. There's nobody there. And it turns out that this ship is actually a big computer where a lot of people have been like absorbed into a big computer. They're virtual aliens. They're people who have been absorbed into a computer. They're, you, you get it, right? There's just, their consciousness has been put into a PC, essentially. So uh, they are running out of energy. And so I think they have like a big distress call or something. And so council races come over and there's like a big exchange. And so uh, there are these aliens that now inhabit other people's bodies because you can, that is what the entire story explains is that people from the Citadel races borrow their bodies to these aliens so they can see the world and experience the real world again because they've been stuck in a simulation uh so hard yes they're literally aliens in the like they're literally matrix aliens that is the story what happened to the virtual aliens that's an entire civilization that was stuck in a ship what happened to them after the reaper war did they survive <laughs> Ralloy tricked the Reapers into not harvesting them. What happened to the virtual aliens who swapped consciousness with the individuals on the Citadel? There we go. Were the Kirik determined to be intelligent by the Council? The Kirik, right. What the happened to the Leviathan once the Reapers were gone? These are just a tiny portion of the lingering questions revolving races in the wider lore and questions I'd like to know the answer to. And the reality is that a lot of these questions may never be answered. And sometimes it's okay to just leave threads up in the air without finalizing them. But Mass Effect 3's endings always felt like we just barely learned what happened to the Milky Way galaxy. We never really get to see the true effects of what happened, aside from a slideshow of our companions, <clears throat> depending on if you choose destroy, synthesis, or control. But we never really learned how the greater galaxy fared. To me, Mass Effect 3 never really gave me the closure I needed. Nope. Especially with Shepard's breath. Yep. That breath haunts me mm -hmm. because it doesn't necessarily feel like Shepard lives to me. I know the devs have confirmed it and that is what that means. Here's the thing, right? Despite having uh, <clears throat> chosen the perfect destroy ending and gotten that so many times, I still get this bottomless feeling in my stomach whenever I play through the endings of Mass Effect because I always feel the same way, right? I feel empty, like I've been crushed, like I've been disappointed all at the same time. It's the worst feeling because it's the same feeling I got from when I first played the game back in 2012, when I got so, so blown away by, is this it? Is this what they're building towards for this many years? And I, st it's still there. <laughs> Man, this game cheated on me emotionally. <laughs> um, I, I respect it if you like the endings. It's fine. It's fair, right? But I don't. I still don't. But there's still so many questions around it that I have. Who found Shepard? Did Shepard need another round of repairs? Is Shepard's lifespan longer than your average human? I think so. Similar to mm -hmm. how Miranda's is? Yes. And yes, some of these questions can also just be left as fan headcanons. And I'd argue that fans have had... Uh, same, like even if I get the Shepard lives ending, it doesn't feel like a version where Shepard actually lives. No, exactly. It doesn't feel fulfilling. It's not the one... As Jeremy John said, it's like a bullshit ending, right? It's like a half-assed cut-to-credit bullshit. It's like, I want full closure um now again you know there are uh people out there that argue that oh it's it's uh, artistic integrity you know uh that was their vision in a way but i okay i understand it right because there are franchises that do the same thing they leave you essentially on red <laughs> <laughs> That is what they do. It, so it, you don't get any closure. You don't feel like, oh, 
I've gotten a definite end to the story. There's no dots. There's no end sign. Yeah, it made me cry as well. Yes. You're just emotionally connected with the Normandy crew and then it's over. Yes. Had over 10 years <clears> to establish <throat> their own stories of what happened to their shepherds if they lived. So all of this is complicated territory. But this next game has the opportunity to provide some insight into what happened to Shepard, our companions, and the entire galaxy. And I genuinely hope that they do. They also have the potential to really expand on the world building. We still need to see Palavin. Maybe we could also see a restored Tuchanka. Please. And finally see what the Corian homeworld Rannoch looks like. Yes. Especially if they're working alongside the Geth. Maybe we see the Geth becoming recognized <laughs> by the larger galaxy. I like the auto caption. The good. <laughs> God damn it, YouTube. Um, take a note from Larry, and I cannot tell you how satisfied I was with my ending and epilogue. It blew me away. Yeah, like I've I've replayed the game now a couple of times. It's an entirely different deal. The as sentient, after fighting the council's AI laws. I don't you know. You forgot to fix the CC. Do you do that? I feel lazy. I never do that because it never gets it right anyway. That's just a an extra bunch of hours I have to sit around. Like usually it does uh like um uh, you know, it does accurately um read what I say. I've I've actually started thinking about whether I should use the premium feature, but I don't know how to do it because there is supposedly one that actually reads what you're saying, but it, I don't know how to use it. There's really just so many possibilities there story-wise to connect to story threads that have already been set up. And one of those major threads is the dark energy plot that was dropped in Mass Effect 2. Oh, and it was never picked up again. Yes. It's the perfect way to connect the games and tie back to what we already know while also expanding upon it. So yes, I think there's a ton left in the Milky Way galaxy. I feel like we only touched the surface of the alien civilizations and the galaxy at large. Mass Effect has really intricate lore, and so much of it hasn't been explored. Not only do we have the timeline of our Reaper harvest, but the timelines of thousands of years completely wiped out from their harvest. We haven't learned barely anything about the Prothean Empire, nor have we learned anything about other Protheans aside from Javik. I think we gotta mention that it's probably in the billions of years there when it comes to the Reaper's history. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, maybe I'm misinterpreting what you said, but uh, yeah, like, uh, I just, I just, you know, I just thought about it. It's, it's probably billions. Who was it that made a calculation of how many Reapers there were? And one uh, Reaper Dreadnought was made every 50,000 years. And so when you count them all together, it's like close to a billion or something. It's insane. That's how much history was just wiped out when you kill all the Reapers. What if there are aliens out there that survived previous harvesting cycles? Oh, I usually do because I've had some people in my comments while hearing with hearing issues talking about CC. So I want to make sure that they can read properly. That is respectable as hell, Kala. I should probably do that too. <laughs> Stop being so lazy. But usually it actually does pick up what I'm saying very well. There are some words here and there that it just, you know, it doesn't know how to translate. I think most people understand that, you know, who might be reading if they have hearing issues. Might be understanding, oh, we, he, he's meant to say something else because that didn't really make sense. <clears throat> and we just haven't met them yet. There's so many possibilities. And while I do actually think we'll be in the Milky Way galaxy based on these pictures, we've also seen several Andromeda references. Time. Right. including a direct reference to the year that Andromeda takes place. So the dev team is clearly pointing in that direction. 2819. And while I enjoyed Andromeda, I don't particularly want to return there. Before you close the video, hear me out. <laughs> I want the next game to be... Every Andromeda fan is like, no! <laughs> Tosses their computer out the trash. Uh, no, like, yeah, really. Um think she has a good motivation here. Be ...about the Milky Way galaxy. But if the game does well, if Bioware does well, I think Andromeda could do well with a real sequel or a DLC. But there wasn't enough investment for me to want to return there for another main game. And if you disagree, that's absolutely fair and totally fine. This is just how I feel about Andromeda. And I'm going to be critical while trying to remain fair. 
As a disclaimer, I also played Andromeda three years ago for the first time, so I didn't play it during its initial bug-filled release. So I know I have a different perspective than someone that played during its 2017 release. Mm -hmm. With that said, I have seven major criticisms for Andromeda. My first and main issue with Andromeda is that tonally it was a major shift from the original trilogy. Yes. Andromeda was a much more lighthearted game with a lighter and younger tone than the original trilogy. And we know this was intentional. An interview about Andromeda revealed that it was intentionally made to feel more like a CW show. <clears throat> I heard about this back in the day. Or well, not that far back because this article was written 2022. But a while ago. And <laughs> that makes uh, so much sense. CW shows are really a hit or miss every goddamn time every goddamn time and even with the good shows like let's say the flash the writing is not always that good despite how relatively good the show is it still feels like teenage drama Right. So, yeah, I don't, I mean, this makes so much sense, man. It's like, that is not, that is not what Mass Effect is about, man. It's not CW. <laughs> it's insane that it was actually meant to be that way. Uh, Mark, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Which the CW is geared more towards a young adult audience. And I think that's felt all throughout Andromeda. And while I don't necessarily think that this is bad. Video game developer Mark Dara, who previously worked as a director of Bioware, discussed his experience with Andromeda's uh, development. I did provide feedback on Andromeda that I felt like, and I said that this feels like a CW show, was told that's on purpose. Oh, so Mark, oh, right. He, he didn't have anything to do with the game. Sorry, Mark. Okay, so he actually gave the feedback that, yeah, this feels like a show. This feels like a W show. <laughs> CW. That's good on Mark for actually calling them out like that. Uh, wow. Ouch. And they, mm, yeah, okay. It's, mm hmm, that was done on purpose. Okay. Actually thought about this more since then. And actually, I think it's this Shepard is the protagonist of an action movie from the 80s and 90s. Writer is a protagonist from an action movie from the 20s, 2000s. So there is essentially an intentional kind of moving with the audience to some degree. There is, I would say that Writer feels more like a Marvel protagonist than anything. It's like they picked, uh, you know, all the, all the cringy slash funny bits from the different Marvel movies and just put them in one character. That's what it felt to me, right? <clears throat> Gotta love Mark, yes. It's good that he actually called them out on that. But man, it's intentionally made that bit. Whoa, my God. Whoa, my God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. But I do agree, yes. Mass Effect really does feel like uh, something from the 80s or 90s. <clears throat> Shepard really does feel like an action hero, like an actual action hero. Uh, like, you know, take some inspirations from... Blade Runner, for example, and then you mix it with some James Bond, and then you mix it with some uh, with some Terminator, and then you mix it with some... I mean, you know, it's a perfect mix of all those badass characters. <clears throat> I also Remember don't think uh, that Bioware Forums? God, yes. Mass Effect is really the place for that, especially in a main game following the trilogy. It's very clear Andromeda wanted to bring in a younger, newer audience. And I think part of the trilogy's appeal is that it is very forward uh -huh. about being a game for adults. Not only are the game's themes and storylines darker, but the sexual content, the graphic content, and the horror elements are not for a younger audience. That's not to say young people didn't play it, because they absolutely did, but Shepard was 29 when the trilogy started, and was in their 30s by the end of all three games. 
that is a fully grown adult with a very adult life. And that's the audience it felt like it was geared towards. And that was lost in Andromeda. Yeah, so I played uh, Mass Effect 1 when I was 16, I think. Let's see, when did Mass Effect release? When 2008, what, right? 2007, 8. I don't really remember exactly the year, but I think I was 16 or 17. I was still relatively young, and Shepard quickly became one of my favorite, uh, favorite protagonists ever. It was just like, oh, it's a perfect mix of a sort of character that is that has a definite story in a way, but it is also me. It's a perfect mix of me and an action hero that I could see, like, from a movie or something. And uh, it was... Shepard is such a badass, you know? No matter if you choose Femme Shepard or Male Shep, Shepard is such a badass. And comparative, <laughs> comparatively to, to Ryder, <laughs> Ryder felt more like... Prime example, a, I don't know, maybe C.W. Barry Allen, honestly, at parts. Uh, Miss Rolton very focused when Arya popped up. I mean, she, I mean, come on. Can you say that you were not looking at Arya when she popped up? I mean, it's Arya, come on. One of the hottest girls in Mass Effect, come on. Um... Do you think they will bring the uh, Renegade playstyle back? I hope so. Renegade and uh, Paragon. Hell yeah. Just go back. Go back to the good old days. Um, Mass Effect uh, 1, 2007. Uh, Mass Effect 2, 2010. Right, 12, 2012, Mass Effect 3. Damn, they were released in such short windows. It's insane. Now we have to wait like 5 to 10 years. Uh, but yeah, okay, so I was probably 16 by then, I think, or something. 16, 17. Wonder how Bauer views Mr. Holton. Probably as some dickhead from Sweden. Which I've always found <laughs> as an fine. odd choice. I don't care. <laughs> considering it didn't feel like the franchise grew with the original fan base, which hey, you would think would be its main target audience. By the time Andromeda came out in 2017, Mass Effect had already been around since 2007, since the game's first launch. There we go. It had been 10 years since the first game came out. 10 years for the fan base to grow alongside the franchise. 10 years for all of those fans to get older. And then Bioware releases a game that's made for an even younger audience with a very young protagonist in comparison to Shepard. And I'm not saying every Mass Effect game has to have a protagonist that's older and continues to get older. I'm just saying that it was a major disconnect from what we felt in the original trilogy with Shepard. Yeah, so the, the the big problem really seems to be that a lot of older fans just did not vibe it with Andromeda at all. And it was really the old fans that really is the ones that are going to kickstart the, the, the sales of the game, really. Uh, it's sort of like why Star Wars is timeless, right? Why... Uh, why uh, A New Hope? Uh, why a... Um, Empire Strikes Back, why Return of the Jedi, why all those movies feel timeless and why so many kids still watch those movies and so many kids view them as the best Star Wars movies is that they were the best Star Wars movies. And uh, it's it's insane to me, like, that is really what they should have kept in mind. Uh, but then again, you know, it's hard to say back then, but... I really think you can like sort of apply that here. The original trilogy are always going to be the best Mass Effect games. And so you kind of want to, you kind of need to please the old fans because they are the ones that carry the franchise on their backs by buying the game. So, or the games. So, hey, it's super, it's super important. Uh, <clears throat> I'm probably older than a lot of people in chat. I don't think so. I think we're probably of the same age, most of us, like from ranging from like 25, 30, 35, 40 and older, of course. But yeah, Kala uh, <laughs> Loki calling us old heads. <laughs> I feel old, really. Um, keeping the fan base that's keeping your franchise alive is kind of important. Very true, Raldi, yes. That is one big mistake that a lot of franchises, no matter if it's in gaming or just in film entertainment or whatever, 
just seem to be a mistake that they keep making and uh, it's not working that well uh, for most of them. They're realizing, I think, uh, so um, they're backpedaling and so they bring, try to bring the old people back. But here's again, you know, the problem. You don't want to, you don't just want to do nostalgia bait, right? Uh, <clears throat> which is why I can respect some ideas that they did in Star Wars with some of the characters. Like, for example, Han Solo, right? Spoiler alert, he dies. He gets killed by his own son. I think that was okay. I think that was an, you know, that's an okay choice. Because we got an expectation that they're going to build some really excellent movies off of this. Like, you have a real emotional impact. But then they so severely mishandle Luke Skywalker to such an insane degree. <laughs> I think killing Han Solo, which was what Harrison Ford wanted, was a good idea. After that, though, ah, what the hell happened, man? What the hell? <clears throat> I, I'm, on the, I'm on the boat that... Killing Han Solo was fine because that is what Harrison Ford wanted. He wanted to fucking off the character. That's fine. I respect him. After that, Jesus, what happened? And so you have to handle your characters with respect, right? And I thought, I think that was kind of an okay ending to Han Solo. But after that, no, 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 no. And, um, you have to respect your characters. That's super important. But you also can't just do it, you know, constantly just straddling the nostalgia line because then nothing feels fresh and new. So, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Stuff Harrison Ford. <laughs> um, oh, no, Dylan, please don't. Oh, God. Cheese, never forgiving that little brat outside of a GameStop for spoiling Han Solo's death for me. I'm so sorry, Cheese. That sucks. That sucks. I was actually shocked when I saw that. I was like, wow. Wow. Uh, Dylan, somehow the Emperor has returned. That was the worst line. That is the worst line I've heard in so long. I was like, oh, God. Could they even do worse? Uh, they fly now. They fly. Jesus, those movies have just turned into memes by now, unfortunately. For me, my writer, no matter which dialogue options I chose, writers still felt very young, inexperienced and unsure of themselves, which is fine, but they never really felt like they grow out of it. They don't yeah. lose that trait. Yeah. Even at the end of the game, writers still felt relatively the same yeah. in my experience. There's no change. And writer was fun, and Ryder was sometimes funny, and I did enjoy Ryder's dynamic with some of the crewmates, but as someone in my mid-30s, I was not connected with Ryder. And Mass Effect will always have a Shepard problem. Shepard will always be the IT character. Yes. Shepard will always be iconic and remembered so fondly by the fanbase. Mm -hmm. Whether they return or not, Shepard is truly such a massive part of the franchise if not the main driving force as of you know what i blame mark mir and jennifer hale they did such a fucking good job at voicing their characters that they become so iconic people can't let go there mark jennifer you assholes <laughs> how dare you no, seriously, like, I think that's a part, you know, they're so, their roles are so iconic. Uh, despite both of them doing other games and, and doing other stuff and, you know, living their lives, uh, just doing different parts, they're always going to be like instantly recognizable. Jesus, that's Commander Shepard. Holy shit. Uh, you should go, Demian. Have a good one. Curse them for their amazing performances. Yes. <laughs> can never let that go. It's so, so iconic, both of their voices. And I think that's a big problem as well when it comes to writer, because, you know, when you have a character that's <clears throat> so memorable throughout three games, it's so hard to let that go and listen to somebody else that you've never really heard that much before. Maybe if you played games where they, uh, with, where they voice acted before, uh, still though, it's like a very different deal. <clears throat>
the right now anyways. So yes, Ryder was inevitably compared to Shepard, as will whatever protagonist will be in the next game. We can all say not to do it, and we can all try our best not to do it, but Shepard is like this looming presence on the franchise. Yeah. And I have no idea how they're going to handle that beast moving forward. We do have ideas, Kala. We do have ideas, but... There's no answer to whether they're real or not, like whether they're true. But what I was trying to say is that no, Ryder is not Shepard. But I think making Ryder a very young, inexperienced character that lacks confidence and presence like Shepard did was probably not the best choice in the first game that came out after the original trilogy. And that doesn't mean that that story doesn't belong in Mass Effect. I just think that Ryder following Shepard being such stark opposites and being tailored toward different audiences was one of Andromeda's major issues, if not the major issue with the game. And I know a lot of people want to play as Ryder again. And personally, I don't. I would prefer a brand new protagonist over Ryder returning. I just want a fresh start with no connections to previous choices or romances. Do I think Ryder could actually return? Honestly, I don't think so, but if they did bring back Ryder, I hope Ryder has aged, matured, and gained more confidence, and I think that could definitely be done. That could work just to make people go, yeah, okay, I can see myself in Ryder a little bit now, because if they could just emotionally mature and you have different dialogue options that actually make sense with the situations they're in, I could see them doing that, but... Do I think they're gonna? No. I think it's either Shepard or it's a new character. Uh, just to create something new altogether. It's either or because there's too many people that have some really bitter tastes after Andromeda. So yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Who is Ryder? Ryder is and Mass Effect Andromeda's uh, protagonist. It's the main character. How would a uh, Mass Effect 5 even work? Do they make certain choices and an ending canon? That's the big question. That is the, that's the winning question of the day. You know, what are they going to do? How would they build it? Either it's like, yeah, go canon destroy because it's the simplest one to explain. Or uh, place the game far into the future, maybe, where you don't have to deal with the endings, like the aftermaths, eh, where it's all just history, like footnotes and history. Yeah just still think I'd prefer a clean slate. And any direct Ryder sequel would most likely keep Ryder in the Andromeda galaxy because there's so many unresolved mysteries and I can't see Ryder focusing on the Milky Way galaxy anyways, which is what I want. So can Ryder return? Yes, with exceptional writing, but I don't think that Mm -hmm. they should. I've said before that I'd prefer a Dragon Age Inquisition Hawk type situation where we see them again, but more as a cameo than anything. Yeah. My next major issue with Andromeda is kind of hard to pinpoint Mm. because it's hard to determine what aspects of the aesthetics of the game were let down by Frostbite and its engine versus the actual designs. If you watched my last video, I went on this whole tangent about how odd the Angara look. And it's probably one of the things I least like in Andromeda. Yeah. The aliens look weird. Yeah. Not only just the Angara. Not in the good way, weird. They look not very alive, not very interesting, uh, unemotional, unalive. <laughs> they look like robots. They look like NPCs, which is different to Mass Effect NPCs that actually looked like aliens that were alive. They were standing around, talking, doing stuff, fiddling, whatever. Andromeda, it's like, oh, you're finding an alien. This is standing there. And if you go too close, they go like. And that's the aliens. <clears throat> yeah, it's just the designs. It's just, yeah. Um, If Bioware didn't have to recreate every asset ever for the Frostbite engine, this game would have been a lot better technically. Yes, for sure. Agreed. Which of the writer trends would come back in ME4, the one we play as MEA or the twin that was having fun in a bit? 
probably the protagonist you know the one you know the, the one that you play through the game with he's just standing there menacingly yes that is that is the npcs in andromeda man the humans are so goddamn ugly it's hilarious every human in andromeda except for writer looks like absolute shit it's like the texture is all bland the lighting is off the chain <laughs> but the turians Jesus. the krogan the solarians they look odd the legs the faces the body animations mm -hmm. were so janky sometimes that it's hard to look at the angara and andromeda and not be skeptical about their return I've already said that Probably I think that, that the Angara though, yeah. concepts were a lot more interesting. And I think the Angara designs are- That left one would have been cool because then I would have been like, oh, they're like aquatic creatures, sort of. That's what I get from the feeling of the one to the left. Uh, it looks like uh, somebody, like uh, some alien species that like lives in the water. That, that could have been cool, you know, that sort of appearance. The one we got though, uh, God. Are off. The female Angara walk especially weird, not even because they're aliens, but because it doesn't look like it makes sense anatomically. No. And again, this may very well be the animation and engine issues from Frostbite, but that's something that always bothers me in my playthroughs. So if the Angara are returning in the next game- As we can see here, the one to the left over there, there, to the left side, that is obviously uh, an Angara. I think it's talking to Liara as well. And there we have a Geth, the only Geth in the whole picture. Uh, so obviously that signifies some form of importance standing next to Liara. That is, I assume that's Liara having a intense conversation with a, an Angara. So, hey, hate the Turian legs. Yeah, they, I don't know what they did with all the legs, man. In which I assume they are. I hope that they can revitalize their designs and anatomy to better fit Unreal Engine and just look better aesthetically. Mm -hmm. On top of the overall aesthetics of the aliens looking odd, there are so many Asari with the same face that it's just not great to look at. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, they all look the fucking same. Yeah, the, the only one that actually looks different is PB. PB is Ite. The one to the top left there, she's actually pretty cute there, up the... the, the uh, up up there somewhere to the left side left side i mean uh, pb has her angles but the rest of the asari is just what the hell why god pb's face is unlike any other asari that we've seen and i just think the design of her face coupled with the black strike on her eyes was just not for me no they should have removed the black stripe actually saw somebody had modded that away and she actually looked much better i was like damn couldn't we pb why do you have to have this dark stripe on your eyes it looks so dumb you're not a raccoon stop i was not interested in romancing her and i just generally don't find characters in andromeda attractive i think uh, pb is actually one of the more interesting characters in my opinion because she's She's this uh, wild cat, you know, she doesn't really want to stay in one place and sort of, I like the idea that um, the general storyline that you make her stay, that is the point of PB, right? Is that you make her, you manage to make her stay with you. I like that idea where she can't really go from place to place and she is not one to stick with someone. She's like one of those, you know, one night stand type of characters, but you make her fall in love with you so hard that she can't. That is something I like. I like the idea and I like the execution somewhat. And I think her story is pretty all right comparatively to the rest. That is as far as I can say that I'm positive really. And I think um, Vetra is pretty all right, too, really. But PB, she's not that bad, my opinion. But she's not that bad. But re goddamn, remove the goddamn stupid makeup. It's so And dumb. maybe that's shallow to say and maybe not <laughs> polite to say. But I think there's strong merit in having sexy, attractive characters in your game. Because look at Baldur's Gate 3. Yes. Those characters are sexy. They are- I started another playthrough, God damn it. Uh, I know, I'm supposed to continue the, um, you know, the hard mode that I'm supposed to do. 
But then again, look at that face, Jesus. <laughs> then again, I just, I couldn't keep myself from playing. Okay, so I'm currently playing through Baldur's Gate 3 again on my own campaign again, because I just, you know, I just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't keep myself away from it. PB simp. No, I'm not a simp. I'm a, I'm a Liara slash uh, Tally simp. But um, PB is all right. She's the, one of the more all right romances in Andromeda. <laughs> Addicted to BG3. Yes, I've been for several months, a year even since I made my Is It Worth It video. Uh, <laughs> face you love to hate for sure. Uh, Miranda simp. Yes, Miranda is like, okay, so just an explanation here. I'm not saying that uh, PB is anywhere in the range at all on the top 10 best like romances in Mass Effect because everybody else like take, takes top place still. I still think she's better than Jacob though. Are beautiful. They are good looking. Because Jacob is an asshole. I mean, come on, man. You don't cheat on Commander Shepard. What the fuck, man? Um... And that fan base is absolutely feral for them. And the Mass Effect fandom is like that too, but far less so for Andromeda characters. So ultimately, design-wise, on top of the engine issues, there was something that I think all of the companions were missing. And I think part of that missing puzzle piece was a bit of sexiness. Mm -hmm. Again, just my opinion. And I think the same sentiment even applies to default Ryder and Sarah. I was able to make a cute female writer. Yeah, so there's no... Here's the thing. And I've seen people talk about this a lot the last few years. There's nothing wrong with wanting to romance or having attractive characters in your games. Okay? Commonly attractive people is something that most people want. Okay? That is gonna sell... That is literally gonna sell you more games. That is guess, literally going to make you more money. Making attractive characters. Yes, it's fine to make people that are like semi-attractive or just, you know, below average like me, I guess. And it's fine to have those people in your games, but you don't have to make sure that every character is like below average, that nobody is like a whoa, you know, like Liara, like Tally. Yes, we don't see her face, but we can assume what she kind of looks like. Look at her like general body structure. Look at her hips. There's nothing wrong with being sexy and having sexy characters. Let's just kill that idea that, oh, we got to have like, you know, oh, it's got to be super realistic, uh, average looking people. It's like, really? Are you, are you seriously? Uh, I don't know how intentionally uglifying characters is healthy for anyone. Yeah, I don't know that either. I, I, I hate it. I hate it. Um, it's a very weird trend. Yes, it is. I think it's supposed to be the, the idea is, is it's supposed to be more accepting of people everywhere. And that's fine, but <laughs> when you're making your characters in your game hard to look at now, that's a problem. <laughs> Um, if you like Tally, you're a mature individual for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Daddy Holton says he's below average. Hell no. You should, you should sweet, see, Jesus, you should see the average Swedish guy and you'll, uh, rethink that statement. <laughs> um, Uh, Liara is my LE for the trilogy when I can be sure to re-engage with her enemy too. So never had Jacob cheat on me. You're lucky, man. You're lucky. You're lucky. But I could never feel like I could make a sexy character without mods. Hey, Zeb, how you doing? And that's such a weird thing to say out loud, but it's the truth. I wasn't a huge fan of Andromeda's character creation. Aside from the design and aesthetic issues I have with Andromeda, the companions themselves felt very lackluster, especially when compared to the original trilogy. I mostly connected with Jal and Vetra, as I know a lot of people did, but the rest of the companions fell short for me, even the Tempest crew. There should have been more grit, more conflict, more tension. 
more relationships amongst the crew aside from Ryder. I just really didn't feel as much of an emotional connection to the crew, except for Jal. Mostly because the story is so connected to his individual story as an Angara and finding about the history of his people. I didn't feel any... <laughs> I think he's cool. I would have... Like, I like his voice actor. I think his voice is uh, excellent. But... Jal, because he's an Angara and I don't like the design, he just did not resonate with me at all. Uh, I do like him as like a buddy, I guess. But... Man, I just wish the Ingara looked different. I just could, as much as I like his voice actor, it's like, God damn it, dude. <laughs> Couldn't stand Korra. Yeah, she's too. Um, I was in a sorry da da da. It's like, just shut up. Stop. She has, yes, she has good cake, but that's about it. That was the most interesting aspect of the game for me. The Ingara and the Jardan. It also wasn't the type of game where I wanted to go back and try other romances, which is how I am with other Bioware games. The romances are a major appeal. And aside from Jal, I just really didn't feel any major pull to any of the characters. And despite that, Jal's romance was very good. He is my favorite character in that game. The Angara were also really interesting. And I think Mass Effect is at its best when it's letting you, the human protagonist, connect with a new alien and their world, and connect with their life. And aside from the Angara quest and storylines, I think Andromeda was really missing that aspect. So much of it was exploring areas the initiative had begun settling on, and I- I mean, your writer, I think this is yours, right? I mean, she looks aight. Comparatively to other female writers I've seen, she actually looks okay. So... <laughs> Good on you for succeeding in making a somewhat attractive writer. Uh, it's really hard because it's like the Frostbite engine, so everything looks like ass. But hey. Uh, the crew fell too flat for me. Everyone was too safe. Having Rex work with Garrus had tension. For obvious reasons, Andromeda felt like it lacked that tension. Yeah, it feels like, you know, they they have some tension when you're supposed to have these meetings with all the squad mates. But it just felt like it was like artificial in a way you know it didn't feel real whereas you're like oh the turians and the krogan have a really tense backstory they really don't like each other as species so that's saying a lot so yeah good point i think those were the most boring part of the game the remnant tech and vaults were really interesting though and i think if those story threads had been expanded upon it could have been really interesting but alas, I think one of the most interesting aspects of the game isn't really the vaults themselves. It's more about who created them, which alien race, which alien civilization, and when are the most interesting questions surrounding the vaults, and we never find out the answers. Yeah, by far the Jal most interesting Jal finding thing. out the Angara were created by the Jardan is probably the most interesting story and concept in the game, mm -hmm. to me anyways. Mm -hmm. It's a new story we haven't explored, and the concept of the Jardan creating empty vessels is fascinating. Yeah, it's a big mystery, right? It's like them Reapers in a way. It's not as cool as the Reapers, but they said actually they actually set something up that could have been really cool to see. Like, how does this, you know, how does this make sense to what we are going to see, ne you know, next in the story? I think Mass Effect, especially the trilogy, did a really good job setting up a big, huge, massive mystery. Unfortunately, that mystery turned around to slap us all in the face because they didn't really have a good answer for why that mystery existed in the first place. You know, the Reapers, why were they created? How were they created? All those kinds of questions is a big mystery because everybody kept wondering, oh, what's uh, what's the deal with the Reapers? And then, you know, we have Andromeda, which kind of tried to do the same thing, but it didn't feel as interesting. And then at the end of the day, we didn't really know. We didn't really get any answers. So, hey, that was left, unfortunately, unanswered. I like the idea that Angar and Ket were both created by their Jardan. They just... Um,
something something did you delete your comment maybe you did i don't know uh there should have been much so much history to uncover in a new galaxy and there just wasn't that much of one no true yeah but it feels like such a small part of the overall game that is so filled with unnecessary quest that it falls short when you finally reach the climax and in the end of course the game's setting up for future stories and we never got them so the writing is another criticism that i had the many quests that were unrelated to the greater story is something I hope Bioware learns from after both Andromeda and Inquisition. Those games had better stories when you focused on the linear narrative of the actual main story, while ignoring a lot of the filler content. Which brings me to the final issue with the game, and that's the empty worlds. Oh, yeah. Again, this is something I hope Bioware learns from, as it's a mistake they've repeated twice. And while I think there is some good in those open worlds, a lot of it is mindless fetch quest. The most interesting side. Starfield, anyone? Quality over quantity. Yes, that is what we want. I think everybody wants that. Baldur's Gate 3, look at this game. It's so fucking packed with handmade stuff that's quality most of it is at least starfield <laughs> andromeda <laughs> it's so god damn it rip yes rip starfield rip andromeda like all these mistakes that so many of these franchises do is always just oh let's have a big open world with nothing to do <laughs> jesus Oh, but you're mining things with your laser. <laughs> it's just, grr, it's not what I want to do. The quests I think we get in Andromeda are the quests surrounding the- You're getting immersed. Stop telling me what I feel. I'm not getting immersed. Good characters, good writing, good combat, good uh, shooting. That makes me immersed. Yavara and the ancient AI. <sighs> Any story revolving around AI is pretty interesting in the Mass Effect universe. Our do Rockstar does both. That's why everyone loves their games. Yes, Rockstar, you know, is really a legendary studio when it comes to quality. But they literally never miss. As much as I criticize how much they've been just been selling fucking, you know, shark cards and all that shit for GTA V, their main stories and their worlds and their characters are so, uh -huh, they're just so insanely good. Red Redemption, Red Redemption 2, some of the, my favorite games of all time, fucking best cowboy games that could, like Western games that could ever be made. Honestly, I don't think anything will ever top Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption 2. And they're so filled to the brim with stuff to do. Yes, you can run around and get lost in the world, but you always find something interesting that somebody made. First, and I thought that one had a lot of potential especially if it was created by the Jardan. So there's obviously good and Andromeda. There were some really interesting story threads and ties. Sorry, Gala, Witcher games, yes. Uh, fuck, Witcher 3 is so huge, it's just insane. It's, it just keeps blowing my mind how big that game is. People still keep finding new things in it. Um, yeah, Phantom Liberty really is the game that Cyberpunk should have been all along. Also adds a ton of content that's really good. That's why I was so pissed when they killed DLC for Andromeda. The game just withered and died because the universe was left in an unfinished and empty state. Yes, it's it's unfortunate, but there is a reason why they put the franchise on ice. And that's just because they realized just, oh man, we messed up with Andromeda, man. 404 Bean, how you doing? Welcome. Is into greater stories that just weren't finished. And I hope eventually they do one day find some way to at least answer some of these questions. Mm -hmm. I also think that while I wasn't the hugest fan of some of the companions, the voice actors did a great job bringing the characters to life as some much as they could. And even if we don't return directly to Andromeda right now, I still hope all of the cast returns especially Tom Taylorson and Frida Wolf, who received some extremely harsh and scary backlash for their role as writer. Yeah. 
I would love to see all of them return to the series so that their last connection with the franchise isn't a bad one. And they are all seemingly staying somewhat connected to the franchise. Tom Taylorson has been active every N7 day, showing his love for Mass Effect, and recently, in an interview, said he's heard some rumblings about what's going on with the next game. Damn. So who knows, maybe they will return and maybe Andromeda will be the focus. I also just want to say that I think the Bioware team never releasing Andromeda DLC was such a detriment to the game. They could have absolutely improved upon the storyline and loose threads with a DLC that at the very least answered questions surrounding the Corian arc. Mass Effect 1 mm -hmm. didn't release as perfect. Those companions especially grew on people over the course of three total games, mm -hmm. each one improving upon them more than the last. Yeah, Mass Effect 2 really heightened uh, the character building uh, with the existing characters and with new characters even. That really is a, a character-driven game, Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 1 was more about the vibe, the mystery, the setting up a universe. Uh, and uh, while I love Garrus and Tally, Rex, Liara, like in the first game, you know, Kate and Ashley, I do think that they're so much more improved in Mass Effect 2. Like as much as uh, Mass Effect 1 is my, like, you know, periodically my favorite Mass Effect game, you know, tied in with Mass Effect 3, I think Mass Effect 2 still did such a great job, like character, giving, giving all the characters proper backstories, giving them some proper love, um, care like character building. And then in three, you know, we were so attached to them that it's, you know, that the ending, unfortunately, endings were so disappointing to me. <clears throat> and of course, the Mass Effect 1 companions were better in terms of writing and originality, but the team also made them better with time. And it's a sh uh, No Man's Sky, a game is only dead when they abandon it. Andromeda could have been saved with a lot of work. I see what you're saying there, Hundeth. The problem here is... At the end of the game, or at the end of the day, you could almost say that No Man's Sky is really... It's more of a like a live service game in a way. Not really, because, you know, they're not really selling things to you. But they're building upon the game and they have a very small team. And so with each patch they introduce, more and more people keep buying the game. So he can, like Sean Murray, can keep paying his developers, which, you know, frankly, there aren't very many of at Hello Games. And so for Bioware to do that, they would have to, like, keep bringing out new content for Andromeda over and over. But I see what your, your point is, because if we just look at Cyberpunk 2077 with uh, Phantom Liberty recently, like... CD Projekt Red didn't give up on the game, which is awesome. And they released a, an anime to tie in, and there were also content together with the anime. And so, yeah, thankfully, I think most people have left, like most fans have been like satisfied with Cyberpunk and they want to see what's next. And so people, most people don't have that bitter taste in their mouth anymore when it comes to Cyberpunk. So I see what your point is, for sure. But I think Cyberpunk is actually a better example. If they would have just done what cyberpunk or cd project did uh, with cyberpunk then yeah for sure like if they just didn't give up on the game <clears throat> chain of the Corian arc dlc never came to be i also think that centers around a lot of fan frustrations and if we got that dlc maybe we wouldn't be in the position where we are now where both timelines are going to have to be merged with some weird timeline or time travel mumbo jumbo if they decide to go that route anyways Time travel I also jumbo. think something oh, that no. unintentionally failed Andromeda is that the characters were hard to connect with because of the animation issues. Yes, they've been updated and fairly overhauled since its initial release, but they are nowhere near in comparison to what you'd expect from a Bioware game. I think if the characters had had better animation... Look at that cake, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah... Yeah, Cora did have cake. Yeah. <laughs> ...and expressions, they would have connected more with the audience. With that said, those same characters, if brought back,
could be overhauled with designs more in line with what we get in the original trilogy, and given far better animations and expressions, which is something Bioware has always excelled at. But this is an investment. Bioware bringing back the Andromeda crew means that they will have to invest in fixing issues from Andromeda while trying to resell the characters to the fan base again. And I'm not saying that these characters are terrible by any means. Most of the characters are good and at worst, okay. All these characters would most likely have to be either remodeled or ported from Frostbite to Unreal, yeah. and rigs and animations would have to be overhauled. Game dev is sectioned off into what can be paid for. And from Andromeda interviews, we know that they were given the budget for two new races, the Angara and the Ket, and that's it. Every Oop. character brought I back- I gotta mention that voice actors aren't cheap always. Um, even if you are bringing on a voice actor that doesn't take that much money, hiring so many voice actors to come back, like if they're gonna bring the OG crew back as well as like the Andromeda crew, wow, that's a lot of money, you know, just for that. So I think they're gonna have to like decide, honestly, if you think about it like that, they're kind, they kind of have to decide what, who they're gonna bring back because that is a lot of money to pay out to a lot of voice actors who may have to t do like so many takes, so many lines, and some characters might even have to be cut, but they still will have to pay them. So, uh, yeah. Oh man. So yeah. And I no, I don't think they're gonna, because I think Bioware are pretty aware, especially Michael Gamble and his team are pretty aware of the whole AI issue. So no, I don't think they're gonna just AI it. Uh, but they're definitely gonna have to be smart about who they bring. Oh, you say that after this bit, nice. Model made. Great minds think alike. <laughs> is a portion of the budget. Right. So when I think about Mass Effect 5, I think about how much budgeting will be given to different aspects. Mm -hmm. And while I don't think Andromeda should be abandoned by any means, is this a type of investment I want for the next game? For the budget to be heavily invested in repairing Andromeda's issues? I don't really think so. But no. yes, there are absolutely several unanswered questions left to discover in Andromeda. Who killed Jean Garson? Who is the benefactor? Who are the Jardan? What happened to Ryder's mom? I also want to say that I am a huge Andromeda fan. So while I do have all of these criticisms, I still love some moments with Ryder and all the companions. And I love the combat and jump jets and being able to explore in a more open world. I also really like the concept of Sam, though I don't know if I'd enjoy another Sam in our head situation. But that type of AI, especially with Sam's complicated history and interesting answers, I think that was a neat advancement of the AI questions that Mass Effect asked us. So I would prefer, like I liked Sam sort of. Uh, I, I, I'd prefer having Edie, really. So if they could bring back the voice actors for Edie, I would be super happy. Uh, she's probably super expensive though, so who knows if that's gonna happen. But, um, yeah, I, no, I'd, I'd take Edie over Sam any day. I love Edie so much. I'm, if you're gonna say that I'm a simp about something, it's Edie. God damn, Edie. I also really like the family dynamic and wish that our sibling would have been a more permanent companion. Such a cool dynamic, and yet we only had it for a very short time in the actual game. So there is some good there. And I think if Andromeda had been given a proper sequel, it could- Does Edie have cake? You're damn right. Well, not damn right, but yes. <laughs> she has the best cake. Could have made the game even better. And I hope I spoke on this topic with enough nuance and understanding that the Andromeda dev team had a lot working against them and honestly did their best. It's unfortunate Andromeda wasn't the perfect sequel following the trilogy that everyone wanted. And I think that a part of that reality is that any game following the original trilogy was always going to be heavily scrutinized for the major daunting task of following in the trilogy's footsteps. 
and I think we'll see that again with this next game. Mass Effect is such a beloved franchise that people hold so dearly, and especially their unique experiences with their Shepard. So to see how this game hopefully and finally moves those aspects forward is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. Mass Effect 5 will be compared to the original trilogy, and now it will also be compared to Andromeda. People True. will be looking to make sure that the sequel doesn't also make the same mistakes of Andromeda. The protagonist and companions will be heavily scrutinized alongside the animations, which will also be heavily dissected by the fandom and media that absolutely tore Andromeda apart. Yep. And I'm not saying Andromeda didn't deserve criticism because it absolutely did. But man, was it overhated, and it still is. Yeah, so and I stand by the fact the thing, that Andromeda right? is a good game. I'm going to be honest, when it comes to Andromeda, it is it is quite clearly just overblown in a way. Uh, it's funny, though. That is the main prospect why people hated so much on Andromeda. Like, some of the criticism was absolutely garnered reasonably, and it was an unfinished game. Let's just say that, right? It was not okay to release a game in this state, to be completely frank. But a lot of this shit we saw, that was just for the lulls. I swear to God, that was just for the memes because it was such a silly game to look at when it came to all the animation issues, the bugs, the crappy lines, the weird one-liners, the writing. There was so many memes you could just sort of, oh yes, this is so unintentionally hilarious. And so it was just the perfect melting pot to clown on because it really was just a shit show when it released. I remember it good and well. I remember it. <laughs> the thing is, the irony here is that I actually enjoyed parts of the game when I was playing it through. And I didn't really think so much about the bugs and the animation issues until I started really looking it up on YouTube. And had myself a good damn good laugh because, man... But yes, all of this, it's just part of meme culture, I think. Like uh, Starfield has become, unfortunately. Uh, like many games have become. Like the launch of Cyberpunk is still kind of a meme. There's so, it's just, you know, it's just so easy to have fun just clowning on a game. Now, I think it's very important to, if you're going to clown on a game, don't clown on the developers. Don't, you know, don't send them shit. Just leave them alone. The game is the, that, that is, you know, if you're going to have fun with something, have fun with the game being in a poor state. But, you know, it, it's, it's very important to keep that in mind. And I think that was the, that should have like remained there, but I know that it just got so overblown and it started affecting the developers and stuff. It was just horrible at the end of the day. <clears throat> yeah, the my face is tired meme. It's just always going to be funny. You know, it's just it's just funny. <laughs> uh, Cyberpunk 2077 was a meme well before the launch. Yeah, that is well, that is well for sure. Game. It you know, you got to salvage a product that you're not happy with. How do you do that? You make memes out of it. That's how you, you know, so at least you can have some form of fun. I'm almost half expecting the new Suicide game to go through the same problem now when it launches, right? That it's a game heavily invested, cost a lot of money to make. But so far, it seems like a lot of things have proven to be catastrophical, really. So we'll see, but I'm almost expecting that to turn into a meme as well. Unfortunately. Has interesting worlds to explore, <clears throat> great combat, great armors, amazing music. Chris, I doubt the devs wanted to release it in the state it was, also not the doing the DLC. No, yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing. Uh, I'm always like, I'm always trying to be on the team of the devs because yeah, I, I very much believe that they didn't want it to ship like it was shipped uh and they were probably stressed the fuck out like insanely stressed so at the end of the day uh, you know ea when it comes to this problem sort of and some really good characters 
There was a foundation there to make something really good. And while it ultimately fell short, there's still potential. So yes, I'd like to see Andromeda fixed isn't really the right word, but more like made better, improved upon. And I can understand why this next game could have the potential to actually do that. So are we actually going back to Andromeda? I've made this visual of all the Andromeda connections alongside all of the Milky Way connections. And it's very clear that Andromeda has been teased and hinted at, not to mention all of Gamble's not so subtle comments. True. But let's actually look at some of these teasers. Could they actually be in the Andromeda galaxy? <laughs> Realistically, I think almost any of the teasers could be Andromeda, except for these four images. This first image is clearly of Ilium. And why do I think this is in the Milky Way galaxy? Because the Andromeda people did not have the resources for this type of civilization building yet. Hmm, Ilium, you say, yes, we've theorized about that. Either that or uh, what's the other planet called? Um, Thessia. But maybe, no, it, I'm, I was just thinking about Thessia because of the Asari. That is sorry there, right? But Ilium is probably the more reasonable one. Uh, a lot of people think that this is Omega, like a, that this is like the future of Omega. And it would make sense because there's a lot of red. So, hey. At Ilium, which looks exactly like this art of Ilium, is one of the youngest Asari colonies. Yeah. Settled during the seventh expansion wave and has about 85 million inhabitants. Which is why it is so Stubbed dense toe, and Jason? populated. Oh man, feel free. The entirety of the Andromeda Initiative mission was only about 100,000 individuals. So the world's being built quickly, populated, and densely inhabited isn't realistic, especially because several initiative colonies were being established across various worlds. I think the same concept the skyline applies to the second. matches Ilium almost exactly with the shape of the buildings in the game. Do they? I have to compare them later. You're probably right. Piece of concept. They do look very similar. Dart, which also looks heavily populated like these buildings were built long ago. We know what early settlement of Andromeda too, yes. looks like. And it's not this by any means. Mm -hmm. Even Kadara Port wasn't settled by the initiative. It originally was created by the Angara, who built it. So even that can't be counted as advanced colonization from the initiative because they didn't do the initial work. So realistically, in the first two years of Andromeda's settlement, there has been very little progress with establishing any cities or actual colonies. And I think if there's a return to Andromeda, it would be around Ryder's timeline of 2819. Because hmm. if it isn't, then why even bother returning? True. So I think that rules out these two images with this one being the third. I know some other creators don't believe this is new, but it absolutely is. This is altered old Citadel art that now shows a removed skyline, no Presidium, a new location, and a new ship. There were no Citadels in the Andromeda Galaxy, only- Right, yes, this is a different version of that one at the bottom, yes, true, true. Yeah, I wonder what this could mean. Hmm. the one that we knew of in the milky way galaxy unless this is a different citadel i do which would too. mean there were reapers in other galaxies ironic. and i think that's a little too far-fetched so yes i think this also absolutely points to the milky way galaxy and the same applies to this latest n7 reveal the poster of the n7 that shows some type of shepherd according to dan after <laughs> life looking club these are very much the exact aesthetics we see in the original trilogy as well as races that never made it to Andromeda. The Geth, Hanar, and Volus specifically. Everything about this image screams familiarity. From the designs of the chairs, which remind me of seating in the Citadel DLC, to the multiple floors. So I also believe that this is from the original trilogy. So yes, I do think we will be returning to locations of the original trilogy and exploring more areas that we haven't seen yet. There are many relays that haven't been explored, and this clip of the relay says Cetherium system, 
which is a name for an extinct otter. Right, Cetherium. It says here to the bottom left where the chat is. I'm see let's see if we can move this over a bit. There we go. Uh let's see a vacuum dock relay construction record monitoring station operated by Green Dagger property of a uh, uh, something deep space Dow Sav ship captain sub Navark Soaral Zillion Jones or something along those lines. And then some Easter eggs with uh SA314 something something file bat. So yeah, that's 314 is obviously a reference to uh, the system 314 of the relay 314, which is from the first contact war, essentially. Yeah, that was the file name, right? I couldn't find any constellations or actual systems named this, so it's clearly a new location we haven't been to. Maybe it's the system on the other side of the relay 314. Maybe it's a new relay where another possible 314 incident may have occurred. I think it's the actual system that the relay is in. And I think this is the planet, uh, what's it called again? Where the first contact war essentially played out. I think that, I think this is it. Who knows? And yes, this could be in the Andromeda system, if as many people as possible from the initiative came together to build this relay. That is far more plausible than entire cities being formed. But the 314 is referencing the 314 relay incident, which happened in the Milky Way galaxy. On top of this, the colors. What? New ridiculous conspiracy theory. The color of this year's Super Bowl logo matches the colors in the N7 posters. We're getting a major Emmy announcement as during the Super Bowl commercials. I wish Mass Effect was that big to show at the Super Bowl, because I know that's a big event for you guys over in America, but it's not gonna. Definitely give off Cerberus vibes, as with Gamble liking a tweet of someone specifically pointing out that it is Cerberus colors. This mm -hmm. makes me lean more towards this being in the Milky Way, but we don't know. And while there is obviously Milky Way visuals, there's also this piece that stumps me, especially because of Gamble's comment. When someone implied mm -hmm. that this is Prothean or Remnant, he said, or maybe it's dot, 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 which leads me to believe this could be from a new alien race. This could very well be something we discover in the Milky Way galaxy or Andromeda galaxy. Yeah. These other images are mostly of crew, and some of this has reused assets, which is common in concept art. So while we shouldn't be looking too much into all of this anyways, this piece shows a drill which as of 2819 hadn't made it to Andromeda. Maybe this is another Milky Way piece, who knows? These concepts that appear to be maybe companions are vague enough to be from any place. But with this one, the visual of the door looks very similar to the underground facility that Cerberus had on Neferon. The surroundings Ooh. were different, and I don't think this is Neferon, but the door hatch looks similar. Aside from the concept art, we also have the two nice clips, catch. the initial teaser, which obviously has the opening shot of both galaxies, and then includes two Andromeda clues, a mention of the Arc 6 and Godspeed, hmm. which is said to Ryder during the Tempest's first takeoff. Yes. As far as Milky Way references, we have the galaxy itself in the opening shot, the destroyed Reapers, destroyed Relay, and Liara from the Milky Way galaxy, and the N7 helmet. Hmm. So again, we're seeing evidence of both connections. So more Milky Way than Andromeda, though. Which leads me to the N7 trailer we got this last N7 day. Mm -hmm. And first off, there is no way for someone to become an actual N7 in the Andromeda galaxy. There is no N7 training and testing to go through. And there's no alliance. They're not there. Um... With a new elusive man, with the elusive man dead, a new elusive man picks up the pieces. I don't know, maybe. I mean, it could work, but I think a lot of people are tired of Cerberus. The trailer, it, uh, that that trailer is so magical. Yeah, I've seen it so many times. Uh, that and the concept art. You guys have no idea how many hours I've spent just looking at concept art pieces and this trailer, among other footage. So it's like, 
uh, you know, but I, I can't stop because it's just, yeah, it's hypnotizing. The actual N7 training requires a recruit to go through the Interplanetary Combatives Academy, also known as N School or the Villa. This academy recruits officers from every branch of Earth's military to partake in the actual rigorous N7 testing, which includes excelling in combat, in active combat zones, and an intense survival exercise. This could take roughly a year to complete. There could also be no new N7s in Andromeda hey, because Mopalini. of this. They cannot complete the testing to earn the rank in Andromeda. So this N7 has to be from the Milky Way galaxy. True. This N7 is also walking in front of a very busy skyline and cityscape. Yes. I don't think this is the relay location, unless they're on the world below in the relay clip. And like I mentioned before, Andromeda wouldn't have this type of developed city. No. But there are some interesting tracks related to Andromeda being put in this audio. It contains half original trilogy music and half Andromeda music. That is something that I didn't think about at first when I saw this one. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's uh, the multiplayer music. But I think that's about it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those things. I just never thought about that until you mentioned it. It's Conrad Werner. Oh, we all know it is. Come on, Michael. Just say it is. It's Conrad. We have Horizon Sanctuary slash Arlette Company. Or Conradina. Conrad's long lost sister, who we've never heard about until now. And return to Eden Prime from the original trilogy. And then we have the Garden Tower and one additional Andromeda soundtrack that I couldn't find the name for. But I've analyzed these clips more in another video. So if you're interested, you can check that out. But we're seeing more pulls from both timelines and games. So if you doubted that Andromeda wasn't going to be connected to the next game, Hopefully all of this changes your mind because it is going to be included, but how it will actually be involved is still left unanswered. And Mike Gamble worked on Andromeda. He was a producer and now he's leading Mass Effect 5. He's not going to abandon his previous team's work and his own work on Andromeda. It's undoubtedly going to be included as it should be. And I assume they are working on improving on whatever they're bringing in from Andromeda. I just hope that it doesn't become the focus of the game. True. We also have to look at the Bioware formula and what does that mean for the next game? Callbacks are fine, but, you know, making it uh, an, a true Andromeda sequel is something I think is a big, a big red flag for a lot of people. And I don't think they're going to go that route. I don't think that, you know, I think they're smarter than that. Uh, Conrad's sister is an Andromeda. I'm sure she's a dancer. Are you serious? Are you real? Are you being real right now? Um, because the next N7 operative of all forts, Jesus. In the Dragon Age games where each game has a new protagonist and a set of companions, there is usually only a small handful of returning characters. If what Mac Walters said about them not wanting to do another trilogy because they already did it is true, then that could mean that this next game gets new protagonist. And if that's the case, I would expect a new roster of companions, meaning only a few select previous companions would actually return. But what 100% Conrad's sister is in Andromeda. He has a sister in Kadara Bar. Damn. Well, maybe we'll see. Okay. I guess that opens the book then. Conrad is the male protagonist, uh, Conrad's sister as the female protagonist. <laughs> and I would prefer to see original trilogy characters so we can learn what happened after the events of Mass Effect 3, then Andromeda characters. I think you when it comes to the endings, there's also a lot of issues with the ending itself, which is probably due to time crunch and the situation surrounding the endings writing. But with so many issues, it's no wonder people came up with the indoctrination theory, which, if you're familiar with, has some ground to it. This one has bothered me for a while, and no, it's not canon, and there's no way they'd ever make it canon. Kala, confirmed indoctrination believer. Now we know. But I think this it just nothing. shows the way that fans coped with the just ending of joking. the game, because it leaves so many unanswered questions. Why wasn't Shepard indoctrinated anyways? 
There were so many opportunities for it. <laughs> Obviously, this is a bit of main character syndrome, but I still think it's interesting to think about. Why was Shepard not in control and why did they shoot Anderson? That one really bothers me. I've got to be honest, I actually think that the indoctrination theory has a lot of, uh, it actually has a lot of legitimacy in it. It's just, um, it's just the fact that it is a dream. <laughs> That's the problem. You know, it's just the idea itself that is the problem. It makes sense. Yes. I mean, looking at what the indoctrination signal does, it makes a lot of sense. But it is really sad if it is the case. It is really horrible if that would be the case. That'd be, ugh, yeah. Um, but because there are so many plot holes with whatever's going on in 3, you know, especially during the ending, that is like, oh, naturally Shepard would be indoctrinated. Shepard's been, like, most in contact with the Reaper than anyone, so of course Shepard is indoctrinated, you know? But it's not a good, you know, at the, the concept itself is a nightmare to really... Anyways, the endings don't really feel like an ending to me. Maybe an ending to Shepard's story, yes, but they completely changed the galaxy as we know it, and we see I, none of I the I never wanted effects. dark. I wanted I uh, need to hopeful. know. And I think they're going to have to address the endings, because we are seeing one major thing related to the ending choice. The Geth. We've the now good. seen <laughs> Geth that are dead, Geth that are alive, and we've heard Geth potentially speaking to Liara. YouTube, come on, man. We've heard good. <laughs> I can't. I just find it funny the way that it like auto translates that to good. <laughs> Geth, YouTube, Geth. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Sometimes like it does a good job, but man, I think it's very clear that Geth will be important in Mass Effect Five. And if the Geth are returning, it doesn't necessarily mean that any one ending is canon because I think there's several ways that you can maybe reactivate the Geth after destroy. But if the Geth have survived, which they clearly have, there will have to be a connection to the ending and there will have to be an explanation as to how they actually survived. So with all of this said and explained, what do I actually want from Mass Effect 5? For reasons I just stated, mostly involving Shepard's impact being felt in the galaxy, I want to return closer to Mass Effect 3. The funny thing is, it's actually done that to me as well. Whenever I mentioned the Geth, it does that as well. It's like, it's like uh, it's, it doesn't register at all. It's just, what the hell is a Geth? I'm just going to add G or Ga or Gi or Ge. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's always some sort of combination between G and some other letter. No, it's not. Uh, it's not you, Kala. It's not your fault. It's. It's a YouTube auto caption is still not that advanced, unfortunately. Can't return for the return of the good. <laughs> I want to see the galaxy being repaired after the Reaper War. The funny thing is that it's actually like captioning it uh, with caps. It's like G U. It literally thinks you're saying the G U. <laughs> it's like YouTube. What the fuck? I want to see a smaller scale game setting up the galaxy again with a more political focus. Exploring what the galaxy looks like without the elusive man behind Cerberus, how the council fared after fumbling, helping Shepard. How will Shepard's involvement <laughs> in the war affect the system's alliance? What happened to Omega and did Omega move in to gain more power after the war? I'd love to see more of a society-based threat than a galaxy-wide scale threat. I really just want to see the aftermath. I want to see Rannoch and Tuchanka. And I want to learn all about our companions from the Tonka. original trilogy. And of course, I want to know what happened to Shepard. But if Andromeda is involved, this makes this less likely. Because as everyone knows, Ryder's timeline takes place 633 years in the future. Yeah, the problem is, the more Andromeda we bring in, the less of the OG trilogy we'll have. It's like, pick and choose, what do you want more? <laughs> Of course, I think most people are going to go say, yeah, I'd rather go back to the OG trilogy, please. I want my, I want my Milky Way back. I want my characters back. I want something back, you know, to grab onto. <laughs> there is a good reason why they, 
as much as I think it's unfortunate, they, they did abandon Andromeda because it just was not fruitful to continue. It, it was just such a catastrophe that it was just not salvageable, I think, you know, ec economically speaking. And so, yeah, I just don't think they're going to make the same mistake twice. I don't. I really don't. Want your uh, timeline to be the next game, please? I, I do too, Julia. I, I hope so. That would make me happy. So if they're finding a way to merge the two galaxies and two timelines, I think Allie, that there's welcome. a few ways that you can do this. Time travel. Uh, Andromeda actually sold fine. Yeah, could do better though. Because that is also one thing. You want people to remember the game fondly so people keep buying the game. Unfortunately, because of how how Andromeda is generally perceived by the general public, it's it's not selling in the numbers that it should, really, you know. As an example, as much as maybe somebody would criticize uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, let's not forget that, yes, there weren't very many games released when Inquisition released, so they won Game of the Year. But they still won Game of the Year. Inquisition still won Game of the Year. And it is, I think, its most sold, like Bioware's most sold game as to this date. And as much as people, some people dislike it, it was generally well received, and it has been well received ever since then. Uh, Andromeda has not. So despite it selling well at the start, right now, up until now, uh, it, might, it could have done so much better, you know, remembered so much, much, much better, and it would have sold many times more. Yeah, I think financially, if they would have made a DLC, it would have sold. Yes, yes, it probably would have. I would have been interested to seeing, you know, trying the DLC out if they just did it. But now it's it's way too late now. I you know, but back then, yeah. Well, time dilation, wormholes, to name a few, which might be happening because of the trailer. Uh, Justin, which says, that's very true. I have recommended the Emmy trilogy to tons of people. I have never once recommended that anyone picks up Mass Effect Andromeda. Thing is, I've uh, been on my girlfriend. Okay, this that sounded bad in my head. I was <laughs> I've been on my girlfriend's ass. <laughs> But I've been on my girlfriend about hey, you. You got at least try Andromeda, and she did a long time ago. She absolutely fucking hated it. <laughs> Linnea is the type of person who literally, you know, she she groans when you mention Andromeda to her. <laughs> she's like, Ugh. she literally looks at me like she's just sick of me to her stomach whenever I suggest such a thing. She's like, how dare you? <laughs> what? That's what you do. I've done it a few times and it it's always the same result. So she's never going to finish Andromeda. She can't take it with the, the animations and all that. It's just, no, it's not never happening. <laughs> hey. <laughs> My face is tired, yes. Anomalies found all across space. But while these are possible, these are honestly things I'm not too excited about. If having these means we can be closer <laughs> to the ending of Mass Effect 3, I'll accept them, but I think they're a lot harder to do than simply bringing back the Milky Way galaxy, but then pushing the Milky Way galaxy ahead to the year 2819 and having the story take place in both galaxies at the same time in the future timeline of the Milky Way and current timeline of Andromeda. This is what I expect. It's not what I want, but I think it's the easiest thing to do story-wise. They really wrote themselves in a corner with Andromeda, specifically with the time jump. And repairing it is going to take some really, really, really good writing to move the franchise forward. I also do not expect to see Shepard return in physical form I think bringing Shepard back is far too complicated story-wise. So I got to ask, because I am not a writer. I keep saying that all the time. I do write a lot of scripts, though, and I have actually tried writing sort of books before. So 
can somebody who actually has experience in writing actually give a good suggestion on how the fuck would you explain merging the two galaxies together? Like, how would you how would you merge the two storylines together while bringing back the OG squad, Shepard and Ryder in the future? Can somebody who has good writing skills, who can see plot holes and see plot threads, how would you do it? Does anybody in chat have that kind of uh, experience? For I'm serious. Do any of you actually have real experience with that? Can, can you find a way to do that? I'm generally like I'm I'm calling out all writers in chat. Is, is there anyone who actually has experience writing? Uh Chris, I just finished my fourth playthrough of the trilogy a couple of weeks ago. Good on you, man. Amazing franchise. Uh, multiverse Reldy <laughs> Kathleen folding space. Cy cypher poet you don't <laughs> nat's not here cryo sleep during travel to andromeda yeah i mean that wouldn't make sense i guess but why hmm. uh with or without space magic i don't know how they would do it i trust in my mary de Marl to be creative in her th writing yeah Dark matter opening a wormhole and the cat invade while the Milky Way is still recovering. So the Andromeda crew needs to come help. But wouldn't it be better the other way around? Because it's it's like 600 years into the future when the Andromeda story takes place, right? So by the time the cat invade, it's the Milky Way is probably going to be insanely super strong in case they make it out uh, recovering from the Reaper War, right? Um, Alexander, I haven't written whole stories, but had slight experience of experience of ex estimating something would go to some direction. And I can't imagine any sort of scenario immediately, immediately where that would make sense. So, you know, bringing the two together. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, my answer is never try to merge them from the beginning. Why create a problem and try to fix it? That's a good point, Adam. Uh, broken i mean simple solution is time didn't pass like they first thought it did yeah yeah the whole you know uh time dilation thing sort of but in reverse um jason i am writing my work and i can see you one could but it will be hard okay let us know what's your idea i write my name all the time so yeah i'm exper <laughs> experienced <laughs> Uh, have a common enemy, dark matter. They all come together to stop a threat, kind of like a superhero movie. But that's kind of throwaway, though. <laughs> Isn't it? E uh, Octopus, Oculon, aka New Relay, connects the new galaxies. Insta travel to Andromeda, big threat to both galaxies from humans doing something human-y. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, humans doing something human-y. Cry sleep makes sense, but it's boring as fuck. It would be, it would work, but it would not be popular. Popular, true, because you'd like, okay, why is Shepard traveling to Andromeda in cryo sleep? It makes sense. Yes, you could do that, but why? It's like, oh, I'm sick of the Milky Way. I think I'm going to Andromeda, <laughs> and Shepard just goes with the squad, leaves. Um. The Krabbe, uh, two main characters like Last of Us 2, but which game, which play in these two times? Maybe future main character tries to follow some clues from Shepard or something. Interesting. Uh, Dial D Dylan, it would have to do something to do with time dilation that occurred with traveling between galaxies. Something like traveling back to Milky Way caused the Andromeda crew to travel back in time. Yeah, something like that. Not exactly time travel, but time dilation that's messed up, messed up by like dark energy or something, right? Uh, Kala, personally, I hope we get transmissions or something from Andromeda. Made the message from the 2019 clip is something being sent to the future, not coming from the past. Hmm. Yeah, time dilation, but in reverse, like what they're doing now with Exodus, right? Or with Interstellar. It's like, yes, um, the faster you go, 
uh, time travel faster for the observer, which is what's the actual theory of what happens when you travel at speed of light or faster, or when you start approaching the speed of light, right? Sort of like an in interstellar. But what if, because of dark energy and because of uh, element zero, something happens and they like the it's in reverse instead. So time passes quicker for the people in the arcs that travel to Andromeda, but it passes slower for the people in the Milky Way. That's how you could do it, but it's a weird way of explaining it. How would you do that? Uh, quantum mass relays maybe ease the solution requiring existing tech. Milky Way was able to travel to Andromeda could bring quantum tech with them. True. Uh, Kathleen, you would need huge amounts of energy to open space. Dark matter is supposed to contain such power. It could be used to open a hole like Event Horizon, but hopefully not to hell. Hopefully not. <laughs> I would make a plot of a villain who can travel across space faster than anything like Reapers and bring Shep and Ryder to join forces by going through wormholes to bring them together. Yeah, so essentially time travel, kind of. It overrides a lot of people's headcanons and choices from Mass Effect 3 and removes the agency you feel when you replay the trilogy. It's dangerous ground. Would it be awesome? Yes, but I fully expect a new protagonist. Not Ryder, not Shepard, a new N7. I do expect to learn about Shepard's life though, maybe in vids or voice memos or memorials. Maybe even from Liara's time capsule. That could be a very good but way of doing it as well. But I think bringing back Shepard means you'd have to model new default faces and bring back all of the character customization options from the original trilogy as well. While bringing back Shepard would be a financial success, I feel like this next game is going to be a soft reboot of the franchise. Yeah, Setting up sense. sequels and essentially a new setting with new characters for new players and returning players to get invested in. I think bringing the game forward I just and then care. loosely merging all the endings and making certain choices essentially canon is how the franchise will have to move forward in the end. If we ever want to see Tuchanka, I think it'll have to have the genophage cured. And I think any version of seeing Rannoch will also have to canonize choices around the Geth and Corian's futures. If they basically say, oh, if you chose Synthesis, Everyone evolved out of having the green coating on their bodies. And if you chose control, maybe Shepard took the Reapers elsewhere after restoring the galaxy. And if you chose destroy, Hackett says everything can be rebuilt. And maybe that includes the synthetics after all. So essentially everything is back to normal without any major changes. If you push the setting so far out into the future, you don't have to bring Shepard back in any capacity. Even if the perfect destroy ending is factored in, there's no way Shepard would live over 600 more years. No. Even with Project Lazarus. True. There's just so many routes that they can go if they push the game out and tell Shepard's story as something that happened long ago. And like I said, I know it's the easiest route, so I kind of expect it. Yeah. But I also think that that would be the more boring way to approach the endings. But also, how do you even follow that ending anyways? A game that factored in every choice would be three entirely different games. Yeah. It's unreasonable and unrealistic. Yeah. If they truly can make this game reflect our choices, then major props to them. But I've also accepted that the reality of game development is you're only given so much time, so many resources, and so much money to actually make something tangible. And their task is already overwhelming with moving the franchise forward but also having to make every choice and outcome possible. It that is like one of the reasons why I think Destroy is really like the top picked ending that people go with because it just makes sense realistically. It doesn't make sense when you think about, oh, we can bring all your choices into it. We can make sure that everything works out if you chose synthesis or control or destroy, it doesn't matter because it's not feasible as a game. like. If you really think about it, how how much development would have to go into all the choices you made. Um, so the most simple one is just put it into the future, start with a new character, have some good writing, it have just good isn't new uh, characters. That's it, you know.
that that's the easiest route to go but it could also work going hey we're go we're setting the game after the reaper war but canon is destroy destroy is the canon ending and so because they have to go from something as to not spend all that time just developing a bunch of different like endings and choices and it's then they gotta make the outcomes in the next game it's just not realistic but then again you know i may be wrong maybe they pull a miracle off and make uh the most advanced crazy like uh game ever made yeah mary has so much work cut out for her yeah for sure she must even nullify our choices or make three games yes yes really that would be three different games like i just said so i will accept whatever they do and will be reasonable with my expectations uh bread love technically the witcher franchise did that they completely ignored choices in the witcher one and the witcher three yeah i mean they could just do it like that because the witcher three was so insanely successful that i think the outcry that maybe came from that was so minor that nobody cared like eh. i still do really want to see the after effects of shepherd's choices and life on the galaxy though a well, they have canonized major choices from dragon age so it's not outside the realm of possibility for them to do so no exactly it's very much well within the realm of possibility of them just going yeah that's canon that's canon that's canon that's canon let's move on you know perfect peace between quarians and geth uh, Shepard lives at the end of uh, the dis perfect destroy ending. The sh Reapers are destroyed. We see a bunch of Reapers laying around. Eh, you know, it's the most obvious one. This is what I want to see most in the next game. So yes, in my opinion, some choices will most likely have to be canonized to move the world forward. Mm. I just hope that they can do it in a way that lets us feel like Shepard truly did have an impact on the galaxy. Like their sacrifice was worth it. I think that's my biggest fear. I loved my shepherd and her story with Liara and knowing I'll never get to continue it hurts. All the headcanons, fanfic and fan art will never amount to seeing animated scenes of Ali Hillis and Jennifer Hale as Liara and Shepard. So if we truly have to put Shepard to rest, please let their legacy be as grand as the adventure felt. I still want to be able to replay the original trilogy and feel like my choices still matter. I want to feel like I can relive Shepard's story without having to lean towards certain choices because I know they've become canon. And I think this is something the dev team yeah, will and is taking into account, considering the Legendary Edition just came out in 2021. The Legendary Edition repackaged that perfect trilogy and revitalized the franchise. But it also brought a ton of new fans who feel connected to their shepherd and story and will want to replay those games over and over for years to come, myself included. So even from a financial or marketing perspective, I guess, I can't see them negating all your choices from the Legendary Edition anyways. And even after saying all of this, I still have no idea what Bioware is going to do. This franchise is so beloved and it's already had one game where people felt like it wasn't in line with what they know. Gamble and the team have a heavy, daunting task, fulfilling the wishes and expectations of established fans, while also respecting the Bioware formula of choice. And they have to do all of it while also bringing in new fans to the franchise. It's a lot. I have no idea how they're going to do it. And I wonder if even at this point, they truly know. I feel like every teaser we've been shown is just enough of a tease that leaves every possibility open and that they could change their mind. Yeah, the biggest, like, I don't think I can think of, I can't think of any game really in recent memory where the developers have such an insane job to do. Like, it's, su it's such a baggage for them to solve all this. Uh, and I can't think of a singular franchise that has this problem because no franchise has had choice and consequence in this type of seamless cinematic universe and then have three games built on top of it with a beloved main character that nobody wants to let go. <laughs> 
and then build a sequel off of it when the endings are vastly different and they're galaxy spanning, almost universe spanning, and they're supposed to build a game out of that? There is no game like that has that problem. Not that I can think of where they have to make everybody happier. Well, well, they kind of have to try at least to make as many people as happy as possible. How do they do that? It's so insane. Agosto, how you doing? I've tried a bit to been away as much as I could from the ME hype, saw uh, uh, N7 stuff, and now I'm here. Old habits die hard, lol. Yeah, I mean, you're a Mass Effect fan. What can you do? <laughs> You'll always be back. Um, yeah, it's, it's insane. I, d I don't know how they're going to do this. But the game has been in development since 2019. So it's been in development for six years now. I hope they have six. Wait, that's five. Kala. <laughs> have stuff figured out. I also have to say that the entire discourse around Andromeda is honestly exhausting. People trying to declare that it isn't canon or that it still isn't being included are just delusional. It's going to be included, whether people like it or not. And the whole argument about what the next game is being called. Pretend I can do math. Well, you know, in a year, this statement will be true. It is just silly. Saying it's being called four instead of five, specifically as a way to exclude Andromeda because you think Andromeda isn't canon or whatever stupid argument I've seen is so ridiculous. I don't care what you call the next game, but as of right now, it's standing development name is Mass Effect 5 and trying to be intentionally exclusionary by calling it four won't change that. Sorry for I just like to call it the next Mass Effect. I think uh, I think that's the best way of going about it. I started changing that like a, I think a year ago. I started going like, ah, yeah, let's just call it the next Mass Effect because at least that's what the trailer is called. The tangent, but I title my videos Mass Effect Five because it aligns with what the developing Exodus, studio, oh, what yeah. Bioware, is calling the game. And the amount of hate that I get, and the amount of people trying to correct me is just mind-boggling it's exhausting and annoying anyways if you're still yeah. here thank you for listening this is something that i think about often because so many clues and hints point towards locations all over the timeline and when i'm working on theory videos i'm always asking myself what timeline is this referencing because i think it's the most important question that's unanswered as of right now let me know what you think about all of this do you want to go back to andromeda do you want to be in the timeline of Ryder or after Shepard? Do you want to see Shepard again? And how would you feel if they used time dilation or time travel? Or I would be fine with time dilation uh, because they could just use, I guess, dark energy and uh, um, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> the material, you know, the Mass Effect material. Yeah, element zero to explain that oh it's it literally reverses time dilation on the other way that could work but i think it still would be kind of a you know it would be a giant giant leap so to speak or something else kind of out there to connect the two timelines uh These slim are... we really turned a 45 minute video into three hour ordeal well no because my first, uh, we first talked about my timeline, so that was the first hour, so it actually isn't that long. Highly debated topics amongst the fandom and pretty controversial, so please let me know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments and a special thank you to my channel members. Thank you for watching. Cool stuff. Nice with some channel members. Look at that. Um, all right. Yeah, that was a really good video, man. It's just enjoyable watching these long information packed things where you're just thinking all the time and it's like it's fun having a conversation with Kala and chat in real time because uh you can sort of like uh pull from what she was thinking when she made an argument or said something it's really it's just really fun i love doing this it's so it's so it's so much fun even if we still know this much about the next game <laughs> um it's just uh it's it, it's just so enjoyable just talking about it. I'm going to say it again. This, These years we have right now, these are the years we have. 
until the game releases and then it's just you know then we know what we know no more speculation until you know of course the next game comes out so hey but yeah like as i said before i think less andromeda more a trilogy please i think that's the best way to go about it if you want money <laughs> if bioware wants money it's going to be a trilogy and less andromeda i do think though that they could find ways to merge the timelines sort of but it's gonna be really difficult to do i the only way I can think of is the time, like time dilation in some in some strange way. It was a really well made video, Kala. Much respect. Pop, 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 pop. Don't forget to uh, support Kala as well if you haven't. Gil, Gil, Gil. Guys, so what we can do, right? We can just say the next Mac Mass Effect. It doesn't matter, you know, what your preferred choice of number is. <laughs> The next is fine. Um, what I took from the stream is Liara is the hottest Asari. People want Telly Sweat and Cora got cake. Yes, exactly. That was the entire video. <laughs> that was all we got from this video. Nice information, Kala. I, I'm glad I could learn more about Cora's cake and uh, Tally Sweat. It was a nice, nice informative video. I just want to see Tally House in Rannoch. Yes, me too. I think yeah, most people do. We want that. We want to build the house even. Give me that uh, Reddit Redemption building scene. Lyra Cake is all I need in my life. True. Same. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for today. This was a fun stream. I think, yeah, we, we, yeah, I, we had a three hour stream, I think. I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, being here, guys. Thank you for all the memberships and thank you, Breadloaf, for the one month as an Ensman veteran. Remember, becoming a member is the best way to support the channel. Uh, and I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has supported me so far. It makes my job possible. So, hey, <laughs> let's let's continue this train. I should go. Yes, we should all go. Take care. And I'll see you on Wednesday. I'll be back then, okay?